How's it going, everybody? Welcome to Rolling Lines, and Apples and Genos production. My name is Josh Hutchinson, and I'll be your host. Today, we are going to be giving you a fantasy hockey preview for the Metropolitan Division. It's going to be a beefer, so let's kick this shit off. Before we get started, I would like to introduce my new Rolling Lines co-host. This is Guggen. You might recognize him from Guggs in in, in <laughs> the uh, in the Discord. That he's at Guggs. Um, okay. uh, there's an infamous. Uh, uh conversation between Binksy and I a year or two ago where where uh Guggs actually uh was asking a question during during our midweek show and uh, we had a big debate over over how how you're supposed to pronounce his, <laughs> his username um, um also uh, uh if you uh if you if you follow us on TikTok uh, you probably recognize his face from some TikToks as well he's been doing there that over go. the last little while so so uh Guggen, what's going on buddy Hey man, hey, I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm I'm used to the world of TikTok, uh, which is why I got a little bit of brain rot. So, um, uh, I'm looking forward to being on the actual podcast and and giving you guys, uh, you know, the way I I think about things. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. I love it, man. It's nice to get a fresh perspective. Uh, I'm really excited for what we're we're gonna be able to do this year. Uh, but buddy, we've we've got a lot to get through today. Oh, yeah. This is this oh, yeah. is a Metro Division preview. These i I've really enjoyed doing these these divisional previews to kick off the year. Um, there's I don't know, there's it's just so much to talk about. Oh, yeah. uh, everyone's getting all excited. Uh, Nate and Blake have been doing their projections episode, uh, and I'm gonna implement my projections into this. This is the first time I've done my own. Uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of use this as 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 my own little projection uh, promotion here. Yeah, yeah. So uh, so I'm uh, yeah. I mean let's let's do this thing. Let's man. get into it. Yeah, we got a as, as Blake likes to say, we got a beefer, and uh, yes. yeah, it's a lot a lot to cover, and uh, I'm excited about it. All right, let's do it. So to kick things off, we're gonna go in alphabetical order here. I think that's just the easiest way to do it. So we'll start with the Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, last year, just looking at last year a little bit, they were second in the Metro, uh, first in the league in Corsi four per second percentage, second in expected goals four percentage, and first in scoring chances four percentage at even strength. Just an outstanding even strength team in terms of shot and chance generation. Um, this team is ha, has kind of been known for for not being very good at converting, uh, like being a really high volume team, but not necessarily, uh, um, yeah, like like the the fancy stats crew, the the uh, uh, expect to win o meter, uh, expect to win o meter or deserve to win o meter uh, is always in their favor, but yeah. that doesn't necessarily <clears throat> mean they always win. Yeah. Um, and then their 5v5 save percentage was 18th in the league. They had a 904 as a team. Uh, they had some struggles. Antti Ranta was brutal last Yikes. year. Um, yeah. y- yes. Uh, K- Kachekov uh, had a decent season. Um, and uh, Freddie Anderson obviously was out with the with the blood clot issues. Uh, Kachekov pissed me off, man. You know, the year, the year prior to last year, Kachekov was the man. So my dumbass overdrafted him and like for the first half of the season the dude you know either wasn't in the league or when he was in the league he'd lose you the the goaltending categories or whatever and uh yeah. so you know you i dropped his ass and then post christmas he's a vesna goalie again so screw that guy yeah they they were tough to to uh to kind of predict they had that they had that three goalie carousel thing going yeah. uh like a few other teams last year i don't i don't anticipate there being too much of that are around the league this year just based on looking at things but i don't know they're like you, you never really know and and, and you, you don't know how injuries are gonna go um especially here freddie anderson just seems to be out for an extended time every single yeah. year obviously last year like how are you supposed to i don't want to say he's injury prone because like how are you supposed to know you're gonna have blood clots like 
Uh, yeah, the, you, you can't get too angry at that. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, but they're uh, so their five v five save percentage, uh, pretty average. Uh, their shooting percentage at five v five is eight point eight six percent. That is twenty six in the league. So that kind of lines up with uh, poor conversion. Uh, it's not incredibly surprising. Their conversion on the power play, though, was outstanding. They uh, were the second-ranked power play in the league at 26.9% conversion. Uh, a bit of a very similar uh, high-volume, low-quality, like like not a ton of scoring chances uh, produced. They, they're just firing the puck at the net. Uh, they yeah. also had the second-highest team shooting percentage on the power play in the league, so... I mean, there could be some negative regression there because the, actually the previous year they uh, they were among the the league like they're they're among the 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 bottom they're at the, the bottom of the crop, league yeah. in in uh, shooting percentage on the power play so uh, yeah I think there's probably they're probably somewhere in the middle um, but as we're about to talk about this team has changed quite a bit um, yeah a lot of departures yeah. Yeah, ton of departures, ton of key ones too. Mm -hmm. So Jake Gensel uh, left for Tampa. Uh, we've got Tara Vinen that went back to Chicago. Brett Pesci to the Devils. Brady Shea to the Predators. Stefan Nason to the Devils. Evgeny Kuznetsov took off to Russia. Uh, and then yeah. in terms of additions, they brought in Shane Gossespierre. He was there the previous year. Um, Sean Walker comes in. Jack Roslovic and William Carrier. So, so, uh, so Guggen is this team better or worse? Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know how you, you look at the additions and the subtractions and, and can say they're better. I do like Shane Gostas bear on the power play though, but uh, you know, what, if, what if the coach likes Brent Burns instead of Shane Gostas bear there? So, it, you know, how much of an effect is that going to have? Cause Gostas bear is not, you know, good at defense. So where's his role yeah. going to be at that point? Uh, I, I don't like Roslovic either and either Sean Walker or whatever Carrier. I like his bangs, but yeah. Yeah, I think I think just across the board, this team this team is worse both defensively oh, yeah. and offensively. Um, it's hard, yeah, like he said, it's hard to say that they're they're better in in any way just with all those key departures like Pesci and Shea. That was like they're yeah. you know, kind of a, a shutdown pair for them almost totally uh, for quite a few years, and that's uh, that's like the meat of their. Uh, of their defense core is gone. And then you bring in Goss to spare who obviously, like you said, power play specialist, but doesn't really move the needle defensively at all. Yeah. Uh, Sean Walker's a pretty solid player, but I don't think he's at the level of, <clears throat> of uh, Brett Pesci. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I, I don't think I'm not really very interested in Roslovic or, or Kerry no, uh, no. at all. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we talked about the goaltenders a little bit, but let, let's just take a closer look. So, Piotr Kachekov had 40 starts last year. Uh, he had a 913 even strength save percentage. Freddie Anderson, just 16 starts, but he had a 932 even strength save percentage. Um, people are pretty down on Freddie Anderson uh, and kind of almost like pushing him out the door, uh, thinking yeah. that Kachekov is <clears throat> going to be the volume starter. I just don't see that being the case. Uh, the coaching staff's the same. Rod Brindamore's still there. I see this being a 50 50 tandem. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I don't know. What do you think? Like, it, that, that, no, that's I agree. how it feels to me. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, of course, um, you never know with Freddie Anderson's blood clots and, and whatnot. And I'm, I'm sure he's going to have a few games where he needs maintenance. And, and if that's the case, then sure, I could, I could see Kachetkov getting some more starts being the, the young gun that he is. But uh, as of right now, assuming all things equal, everyone's healthy, I think, I think it is a 50 50. And maybe Maybe they'll give preference to the veteran because the veteran uh, Anderson has to do a lot more work with uh, a lower quality defense in front of him. Yeah, I mean, honestly, whenever Anderson has been healthy, he's 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 been the preferred target for for uh, for Rod Brindamore. So that yeah. it wouldn't surprise me that if if it stayed the same in that way. Totally. Um, in terms of schedule uh, for this team this year, they have sixteen back to back. So in in terms of goaltending, that 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 is a little more enticing for a team that is uh is kind of leans towards towards tandem starting um so they have 16 back-to-backs tied for the leafs for the first in the league uh they have 31 off nights that's tied for 11th of the league they're uh they're 
playoff schedules uh, the, from weeks 22 to 24, they have nine games, five off nights. And then from 23 to 25, 12 games, six off nights. That's a pretty decent schedule. Uh, the 22 to 24, they're not as strong. But, um, yeah, I mean, nothing nothing too, uh, too interesting about yeah. any of these schedule quirks. Yeah. Um, I do like the back-to-backs, look- though. I do like the back-to-backs. Yeah. Um, just, you know... If by chance, um, let's say Kachekov's on your wire, you know, you, you could really strategize for, for those back-to-back weeks. Uh, again, I, I don't think he'll be on the wire, but you never know, because last year he was on the wire because he sucked for the first half. So just something to yeah. keep in mind. Yeah, I, I, I am a little concerned about their team situation, just – just, uh, um, but I, I they do still have some really nice fantasy, fantasy oh, yeah. targets. Totally. Um, and because they're so top-heavy – I do feel like there there is the potential for this year to finally be the year where they start playing their big guys a little bit more. So let's look at the that that leads us to the power play projection here. So so my thoughts are that it's <clears throat> going to be Aho, Svechnikov, Jarvis, uh, Martin Natchez, and Shane Gostisbehere. Uh, you talked about uh, Brent Burns. I, I I mean they've shown in the last couple of years that they're not super stoked about Burns being the power play quarterback anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah. They last year they brought in Tony D'Angelo uh, and yeah. at the start of the year. I, I was I was pretty pretty high on on uh, <laughs> the fact that they were they were not super stoked about uh, about Burns being the power play quarterback because otherwise why would you bring in Tony D'Angelo? Right. Obviously that yeah. didn't really work out. But Shane Gosses Bear did play for them uh after the trade deadline two years ago and had some success quarterbacking the power play. So I just see that being yeah the, the way that yeah. the way that it plays out. What do you think, man? Yeah, no, I absolutely I think uh if not Right away, eventually it will be Goss Despair's. Um, you know, we had the same uh, discussion last year with Goss Despair on Detroit. And, yeah. you know, it's, it, Siders wasn't really the power play guy uh, that he cracked up to be on his rookie season. They brought in Goss Despair for a reason. Goss Despair is good at, like, one thing, and that's the power play. So it's kind of like all you need to know, right? Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I, yeah very similar team situations in terms of uh, – the way that their coach feels about uh about their top their top d man uh quarterbacking their power play it seems like carolina and detroit are both trying to to kind of bring in power play specialists uh in order to take those minutes yeah. um so in terms of <clears throat> forward projections i don't have a ton of guys that are really that interesting uh but let's talk about sebastian aho he's usually the first guy off the board uh i've got him for 38 goals 44 assists and 82 points um, in his ADP in the apples and Geno's best ball leagues, I'm going to be talking about that a little bit because we have yeah. our internal ADP. We might as well talk about it. Absolutely. Uh, it's 43.2. Uh, and then on Yahoo, it's 40.4. So pretty similar. Not, not, not a huge yeah. difference there. Um, I, I obviously I like Aho. He had career highs last year in points. Uh, he actually did get played a little bit more than he had in previous years. So hopefully that's a sign of things to come. But I mean, this is a guy that never really excites me in draft season. Oh yeah, uh, same. I, I I I tend to uh, there there always tends to be someone that's a little more interested in him constantly. Than I am. Yeah, and he's um, a pure C too. And I'm yes. just ne- I have never drafted this man in my life. I like him, but there's always someone better. And and I think this is uh, the lowest he's been since he's actually established himself as a one C. Usually he's like a third round, sometimes late yeah. second round player. I'm not taking that. Yeah, a hundred percent. And then Andrei Svechnikov, uh, I've got him for a twenty-seven goals, forty-seven assists, seventy-four points. That would be a career high, so the seventy-four points. But uh, that's that's over an eighty-two game span. Obviously, he's he's uh, struggled with injuries the last couple of yeah. years, and that's kind of stunted his development a little bit. I've also got him for one hundred and eighty-three hits because he is a beefer. Uh, his his apples and Geno's ADP is forty-six point six, and his Yahoo ADP is 45.8 so also very similar not a, not a huge discrepancy there uh svechnikov is uh, probably has the highest upside of anyone on this team uh he did see a bit of a dip in underlying numbers which is a bit of a concern last year but with the uh, i mean you've got him coming back i mean i think completely healthy um yeah 
And also, like, like I said, like this team is a lot more top heavy. Like I could see him riding with Aho for a good chunk of the year, uh, both on the power play and five v five, and 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 that's that's a good situation for Spetsnikov. So that makes the most I, sense I, to me. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I agree. But the problem is, it makes a lot of sense, and Rod Brindamore is the coach, so it's not going to happen. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, you're probably right. Uh, <laughs> Seth Jarvis uh, at right wing. I've got him projected for 30 goals, 39 assists, 69 points, which is a very nice career high. Very nice. Uh, nice. uh, He's got 100, uh, and then I have him for 108 hits as well. He's a nice, well-rounded player. Uh, His Apples and Genos ADP is 71.3, and in Yahoo, 79.8, so a little bit of a difference there. Um, So, yeah, I I really like Seth Jarvis. I, I, I don't think you're getting him for uh, as much value as, no. as you would have in previous years uh, yeah. because he did kind of have a breakout last year and they've been playing him a ton. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I see him kind of kind of staying with the status quo, probably playing on the right of those other two previously mentioned. Uh, what are your thoughts on Jarvis here? Gug? <clears throat> I, I got a soft spot for him. I, I got him in the last round or two and a lot of a lot of my leagues last year and the dude was an absolute beast i couldn't let him go at one point in the year like early in the year he was the second best player for a decent stretch and uh i, I like to gloat about that knowing it's you know he's not you know that good but um about his adp though you know uh as you said there's not the the value of last year isn't there here and and around that adp you you could get someone like timo meyer if you're in a bangers mika zibanejag hamilton not dobson uh, and I, I don't see myself getting jarvis with that kind of value around him yeah that's that's pretty fair um let's let's go on to martin natchez also a right winger so my projection here this this is a bullish projection uh, I don't actually feel like he's going to hit these levels. This is probably his ceiling. Uh, but my projection here is 26 goals, 42 assists, 68 points. Um, his 5v5 environment is not going to be great this year. Yeah. Likely playing with some combination of Jesperi Kakniemi and yeah. Jack Roslovic. Yeah. Uh, both not very exciting at all. Um, his uh, ADP uh, in Apples and Genos is 100.1. And in Yahoo, it's actually lower at 112.3. Um, yeah, I, I'm probably not drafting this guy. I don't know about you. No, nah, no, nah, I'm, I'm good. You know, I respect the talent. And I was really hoping he'd, like, come to the Canucks. I'm a Canucks fan. Um, but uh, that didn't happen. I was hoping he'd go anywhere else. I think he can really blossom. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I know he's good, but I'll let someone else take him. Yeah, fair enough. And uh, let, let's uh, actually we'll talk about Kakaniemi and Ross. But I do have a projection for these guys. Uh, uh, this is uh, I think Kakaniemi's absolute ceiling projection uh, is like fifty-two points, uh, yeah, fifteen that goals. Right. Uh, but even there is that's that's a stretch. I think uh, yeah. so. This is this is a guy that's that's really a, a peripheral fantasy guy, just just a straight streamer. So, uh, and then Jack Jack Roslovic, uh I mean, I think his absolute ceiling is even less than that. Um, probably around the s- similar amount of goals, 15 goals I have him for, uh, yeah. 48 points. But that's his absolute ceiling. Yeah. Uh, I, I just don't I'm, – I'm not interested in either of these guys. I um, haven't I yeah. haven't really ever been, especially in draft season. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I will I, I will um, compliment Kokkane. I mean, I, most of my leagues are bangers categories, and uh, I – I love center left wing eligible players that win face offs that that throw the body. So if you're in a bangers categories league and Carolina has a good schedule, pick up Kakaniemi to fill up those uh, those peripheral stats. But uh, other than that, no, I, I'm not really into them. Yeah, fair enough. All right, let's move on to the defense. So we've got a couple fantasy relevant guys here. Shane Goss to spare. I think he is probably he's probably going to be the best value on this oh, yeah. team. He's, he's, I have a projected for 10 goals, 43 assists, 53 points. Uh, it doesn't do a ton peripherally, but will get you power play points. And that is super valuable in a bangers cats. Um, his uh, apples and Geno's ADP was 128.8 in Yahoo. It's 158.6. So that's where we're starting to see a discrepancy between Yahoo and our, our uh, people in our discord. So, yeah. uh, yeah, I think Gosses Bear is a guy that you're going to be able to get for, for value. And he's a guy Absolutely. that I will probably be targeting uh, yeah. in drafts this year for like a, a, a 
third to fourth defenseman. Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I'm all about value. I think, uh, you know, that's what got me into apples and genos. It's, it's showing our, the listeners where the value is and, and where the value isn't. So you can stay away from it. And, you know, I, I like that most uh, fantasy managers are, are kind of forgetting about him. 155 for a power play, one defenseman. I mean, that's, you know, reach for that and you're going to be happy getting those power play points. Well, the ADP for Brent Burns may explain why uh, Gosses Bears is so low. So I think I think the people in Yahoo are are probably just projecting yeah. that that uh, Brent Burns is going to be getting power play one. I have him projected for nine goals, 30 assists, 39 points. Uh, his Apples Geno's ADP, 171.9. In Yahoo, it's 118.3. So that's yeah. a pretty significant difference. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just don't I just don't see that being the case. I, I mean, it's certainly possible uh with rod brindamore he he tends to to kind of shake things up on the power play a little bit and he gets itchy uh in terms yeah. of, especially with his with his defenseman but yeah uh yeah i i, I just i just don't see i mean uh, i mean we'll, we'll talk about it until the until we're blue in the face why do you <laughs> get a bear unless he's he's uh he's gonna get the power play exactly but, yeah, yeah. yeah. now yeah. brent burns that adp is gross uh, you, you can literally take mike matheson there who's just so much better so much better yeah. and yeah Hundred percent. So we'll go into our top three targets, but I do. In previous years, I talked about a, a punt and a sleeper for each team. Uh, my punt would be probably Natchez or Burns. We kind of talked about that before. Uh, yeah. and, and in terms of punt, I'm not saying like I'm they're on like a do not draft list, but they're guys that I'm probably not drafting at their ADPs currently. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then in terms of a sleeper. Um, a true sleeper could be Bradley Nadeau uh, if he's able to make the lineup. He actually had 46 points in 37 games last year at the University of Maine. Um, and uh, he's a pretty highly touted prospect that is projected to potentially make the lineup. So that's a guy that could get some opportunity just with the offensive. I mean, the dearth of offensive talent on this team. Um, I, I could see him being a guy that that gets a bit of time. So uh, and, and potentially exposure to some to some good players so uh that's a guy i would definitely be looking out for not a guy i'm drafting uh but a guy yeah, uh, no. definitely a name to know for sure totally you know keep an eye on training camp uh you know put them on your watch list and see where it goes absolutely and my top three targets <clears throat> uh our shane goss spare we mentioned that before um uh, and and in terms of top three targets we'll talk about it we're, we're gonna go with like a similar definition to to the way that that uh, nate and blake have done their top three targets for the projections episode which is these aren't the best three guys these aren't the best three fantasy assets these are the guys that i want to be picking at their adp or potentially like yeah uh, these are these are the best value guys yeah um shane goss is bear um i've got i've also i have seth jarvis i'm pretty high on the guy uh his adp has has kind of <clears throat> inc uh, uh he's going a little higher than than i'd expected so i'm not i'm not inc i don't know uh, uh there there's definitely there's a conversation to be had about right that, but, and uh, and, and, and you, you, so sorry yeah i i, I no, know no, that his uh his adp is is high but you know every league is different maybe every one of your competitors your your fellow fantasy managers have the same idea and sometimes the guy's ADP is, you know, in the 60s, but everyone's like, this guy only had one good year. And next thing you know, you could get him in the 11th round or the 12th round. Yeah, so, yeah, for sure. And, uh, for sure. Uh, and then Andrei Svechnikov, uh, I'm I'm still pretty high on the upside. Um, and at, at, at the spot where he's going, like around uh, 45, 46 uh, that's that's not a bad spot for him to, yeah. to to potentially bet. He's got a he's got a nice floor, uh, and uh, especially a, a nice peripheral floor too with the shots yeah. and hits. Um, but I I do think that there is some some crazy upside there if they finally decide to play him. Uh, Are you worried about him. injury at all? Uh. I mean, I, I I've been pretty outspoken about not being worried about about injuries much at all, and try yeah. not to factor that into my decisions in, in draft season. Obviously, there there are a few guys uh, that have like a, a large sample size of, of getting injured a lot. Like I talk about guys like Max, Max Pacioretty, TJ Oshie, yeah. guys like that um, that are later in their careers as well. Svechnikov, it's so early in his career. Um, I I just feel like. Uh, I, I'm not concerned yet. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm definitely willing to to uh, to bet on the upside there. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 
let's move on to the Columbus Blue Jackets here. Uh, this is a very interesting team uh, oh, yeah. with, with uh, uh, for <laughs> interesting in both a positive and a negative way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so they were eighth in the Metro last year, uh, 23rd in Corsi four percentage, 29th in expected goals for percentage and 26th in scoring chances for percentage at even strength. They were just an absolute mess. Uh, their 5v5 save percentage was 26th with an 899 as a team uh, at even strength. Their shooting percentage at even strength, 9.54. So actually not bad. 16th in the league, right, right around average. Uh, but because they weren't generating a ton, they, they didn't score a lot of goals. Uh, and then their power play was 31st in the league at a 15.1% at a conversion. But... <laughs> I mean, they so here, here's the thing. So I looked at some underlying stats here. They were actually eighth in the league in Corsi four per sixty on the power play, which is which is kind of crazy. So they were shooting the puck a lot. Their expected goals four per sixty and short scoring chances four per sixty were bottom third. So I I mean, and and the shots on goal were actually quite low as well. Mm. Uh, their shots per sixty. So they were firing a lot of pucks at the net they weren't necessarily hitting it and they, and they were quality. really high percentage yeah. yeah it was low quality um again this power play is hard to judge because pascal vincent seemed to oh the power play every single game we talked about it yeah. all the time on the podcast that guy was an absolute nightmare mess. just awful uh, yeah yeah and and i know i know you wanted to go off on pascal vincent a little bit so <laughs> i'm gonna let you i'm gonna let you kind of uh, uh have the floor here yeah, no, I mean, the, what can I say that hasn't been said? The the dude is a, a hockey terrorist, let's be honest. But, you know, there's <laughs> that that might be a good thing for, for you listeners because nobody it, has this team on their radar. And I think they have a potential to be to be quite a sleeper team. Um, there's there's value there that you can get in the super late rounds. Hell, you could probably get like a really good player off the wire, uh, like Fantilli. I don't know if many people are even going to remember he exists, but he's a super yeah. good prospect who he chucks pucks. He's, you know, he's, he's going to be a player one day. Uh, I don't know if he's going to be a player this year, but I'm willing to, you know, take a, a last pick on him and just keep him for a week or two and, and see where it goes. I, I think this team has so much value to give you, um, and I'm looking forward to seeing how things shake up. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like I, I, I'm totally with you there. There's a lot of young talent on this team. I, I, every season I look at this team's roster and I'm just like, this team should be better than they are. Right. They just need some sort of structure. Hopefully Dean Evison brings that to them. He is a pretty, he, he, he has brought structure to, to teams in the past. Yeah. So I'm hoping that he has that effect on the blue jackets. Uh, in terms of key departures, Patrick Line is the big one. Uh, obviously, he wasn't really, I wasn't healthy uh, for most of the year mm -hmm. last year, and was in the player assistance program. So it's not as if it's 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 a. I mean, it is a major departure, but not as major as as it would have been if he was playing. Um, Adam Bulkvist is out the door. Nick Blankenberg. These are guys that were at the bottom of of, yeah. of the defense core. Uh, and then Alex Nylander, who had a who had a hot stretch there. I'm surprised uh, they let him go. I, I like Nylander. He was he was pretty good that last end of the year. Yeah, we'll see. He may he may get a, a chance to play with his brother in Toronto this year, which yeah. should be interesting. Uh, with insane. their their lack of uh, uh, their lack of cap space and uh, and left wing talent. Uh, it, 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 there, there could be a scenario where the where the the Nylander boys are playing together. Uh, and then in terms of additions, uh, we've got Jordan Harris coming in in the Patrick Line trade. Uh, so people are pretty high on him as a defenseman, but that, I mean their defense core is very. There's a pretty big log jam there. Um, mm -hmm. so I, I'm not really sure where he fits in. Sean Monahan was the big addition this off season. Yeah um it's a kind of reuniting him with johnny gaudreau and then jack johnson i mean he's a peripheral defenseman yeah, like, I, yeah. I, I i mean he's coming back to columbus uh which is interesting that's cool uh, he was there in the past uh but uh yeah i i'm not i mean he's hey he's uh, third overall i mean maybe it's maybe he'll remember it's that. incredible <laughs> that that guy's still in the league to be honest yeah good for uh, him <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he's he's carved out a really nice, really nice uh, long journeyman career. Uh, yeah. All right, in terms of goaltenders, we've got uh, this is 
I mean, I don't think this is going to be a three goalie carousel, but there are three guys that I do want to talk about. Uh, we've got Elvis Merzlikens requested a trade. It was a tumultuous year, uh, but he had 40 starts last year, regardless a 905 even strength save percentage, a bit of a tough year for Merzlikens. Uh, and I mean, uh, there's a lot of talk around him. Just, I don't know. There, it, it, I, I heard a rumor in the off season that, uh, there was a meeting a, few, a couple yeah. years ago, uh, with some veterans. Yeah. Where, Atkinson. Uh, yeah. Were they, were they actually, uh, said to management, Hey, we need to get, uh, we need to get rid of, uh, Elvis and Patrick line. Yeah. And, uh, that I don't know if that's true or not. Yeah. Like that's that is a little bit of hearsay, but that is something that's been going around. So yeah, uh, yeah, I don't know. That's yeah. it, it is fascinating, and he has been very outspoken about how he's not happy in Columbus. Do you um, remember uh, that Capitals game where he was? I, he's like talking shit to the Capitals, and then he like lets in a, a last minute goal and loses the overtime. And and there's just this picture of him just looking super defeated, and the the Capitals celebrating while looking at him. Do you remember that one? Yeah, I don't, but that's no. uh, that doesn't surprise me. Like yeah. that, that does kind of sum up sum up the way that 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 season went for him. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know. I I mean, I'm certainly not banking on him the way that I did in previous years. And part of that is because Daniil Tarasov is in the fold. Uh, he yeah. had 23 starts last year and actually got quite a bit of a run at the end of the season. Um, and he had a 924 even strength save percentage. This is a guy that was pretty highly touted, like among like. I mean, he, he was talked about in the same breath as guys like uh, A- Askarov uh, in Nashville and now in San Jose and um, uh, Jesper Wallstead in Minnesota uh, a few years ago. And, uh, I mean, he's had some time in the NHL, hasn't necessarily been been great uh, out of the gate, but he <clears throat> did have a nice stretch there. And I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if he takes over the 1A spot in Columbus next year, even though yeah. Leakins does have the contract. So I think he is probably the goaltender of the future here. I agree. Um, yeah. And then Jed Greaves uh, is another guy that that's interesting. Uh, he's probably not going to start with the team. He does. He did have eight starts last year and had a nine thirteen even strength save percentage. Uh, but he's a guy that that is projected to uh, to play some NHL games as well. Uh, so if any either of those guys goes down, I think Jed Greaves is going to be a guy that's, that that's going to get some time. So totally. uh, and I think. Uh, that could be the tandem of the future, Tarasov and Greaves, if, totally. if Merzlikens does end up getting moved. Uh, so that's a guy certainly to uh, to have in the back of your mind, not a guy I'd yeah. be drafting. Uh, but, Dean yeah. Evison, uh, you know, Dean Evison likes his defensive structures from from what a few Minnesota games I've I've watched. So um, you know, I'd, I, the best way to, to value a goalie is by looking at the defense in front of them, and and if Dean can, you know, really. Yeah, uh, maybe even make a, a bit of a trap game in front of them. I'd love Tarasov, at least on my watch list. Yeah, a hundred percent. And and like it's not as if it's not as as if this defense is has a lack of names. Like right. there there are there are players on this team. Like I I, totally. I I it's baffling to me. Like I just think that the the coaching has been such a disaster. Yeah. Um and then the previous year, I remember the start of last year in the in the team previews, uh, we were talking about how I, you could throw everything out because they had so many injuries the prior year. Uh, but then this year, it's like you could throw everything out because their coaching <laughs> situation was so bad. It's, yeah. it's like, okay, we'll keep making excuses. But at, at some <laughs> point, at some point, they got to start figuring it out. But I, I yeah, it's, only been, that, it's only been 21 years. They'll, they'll be good one day. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right, let's go into the squ- schedule quirks. So uh, they have 12 back-to-backs. That's right in the middle of the league, tied for 16th, 21 off nights, tied for 29th. So actually not a ton of off nights for this team. Yeah. Uh, they uh, Their playoff schedule from weeks 22 to 24, 10 games, five off nights. It's kind of middle of the pack. Uh, and then 23 to 25, they actually have 13 games, which is tied for first uh, at, during that stretch. Uh, only four off nights. Uh, but uh, are playing a ton of games uh, in that that last stretch of the season, so um, they could be they could be uh, a, a nice option uh, for for your playoff uh, schedule. Some of these guys yeah. here, and maybe yeah. maybe nice streaming targets because there are a lot of streamers on this team for sure. Yeah. Um, not not a ton of guys that I I think will be guys that you're holding on your roster for the entire year. Yeah. 
All right. Uh, let's talk about the power play. Uh, so <laughs> we've got uh, the, my power play tr- projection is uh, that if they load up power play one, and I'm not really sure how that how, if that's going to be the case, but in Minnesota, Dean Evison did load up a power play one. So I'm going with that thought in mind. Uh, I think if you're they're going to load it up, it'll be Sean Monahan, Johnny Gaudreau, Kirill Marchenko, and I one of Adam Fantilli or Boone Jenner as the fourth forward there. Uh, depends yeah. on what they want. If they want a net front guy, uh, Boone Jenner is probably the guy. Um, and but Fantilli has so much offensive upside. Like I think he he's got to be in the mix there too. And then Zach Wierenski, obviously, like he's he's the clear oh, yeah. guy. Uh, That's the star. They want option. Uh, love Zach Wierenski. What yeah. do you think, man? What do you think of this power play projection here? Yeah, it sounds about right. Um, okay, Zach Wierenski, that's that's the guy I'm most excited about. A- every year, like for the past like three years, uh, I got Wierenski like in the double digit rounds here and there, and I'm so excited. And and I'm like, wow, I'm going to win this. And then the dude either gets injured or or worse, has to deal with Pascal Vincent. But this year, um, I I think I think this is the year where he's going to pay off. His ADP is pretty good, and you know this could yeah. be it's like a two D. It could be a one D if everything like really goes well. But uh, I'm not going to go there. But yeah, I, I I'm excited for Wierenski, and uh, yeah, he certainly has one D upside. That's for yeah. sure. Like I I I when I wrote I wrote an article about ADP values, uh, just a sneak peek for the Apples and Genos fantasy hockey guy that is coming out. Uh, in oh, yeah. a few days, September 1st is the target date for when that's coming out. So keep an eye out for that on the Apples and Genos Patreon. Uh, just a little plug there. But I did write an article about ADP values, and he was the number one guy on the list. Nice. Because I, I just think that he, he, is, he has the potential to be one of the best, uh, one of the better defensemen in the league this year totally. if he can play 82 games. Uh, and uh, I'll get into that when we talk about defensemen, but... Uh, let's talk about forwards right now. So yeah. there are a lot of guys that I projected here. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a mouthful. I, we don't have to go through every single one. Uh, I am interested in talking about Sean Monahan a little bit, though. Uh, he's kind of had a bounce back year with Montreal and Winnipeg last year. Uh, so I haven't projected for 22 goals, 30 assists, 52 points. It's a relatively conservative projection. And the reason why it's so conservative is I'm not sure that he's going to stick with Johnny Gaudreau on the top line all season. Um, I think they'll probably start him there, but they have Adam Fantilli and Boone Jenner that are both, both guys that can play center on the top line. Um, and are, I mean, are, are probably, are probably even more capable than Sean Monahan of centering the yeah. top line at this point. Um, so I, 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 that's why, that's why my, my projection is, is as conservative as it is for him. Uh, I also, am not sure that he sticks on power play one either. That's no, the other factor. Yeah. So, yeah. so what, what are your feelings about this, uh, about reuniting these two boys here? G- Goudreau and Monaghan. I mean, yeah, they had some sick chemistry, but, uh, man, how long ago is that? Uh, yeah. w- was, I, I honestly can't remember the last season Monaghan was healthy on the Flames. I know last year he was fine, so it, 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 I kind of forget th- uh, how good their chemistry was there. And and another thing about Monaghan, you know, Apples and Genos talks about, you know, injury proneness and, and some misconceptions the general public have on a player being injury prone. I think it's fair to say Sean Monaghan is injury prone, even though he was healthy last year. So it's like I, I could see him – having something wrong with him later down the line and just losing that one C spot from that alone. Um, So how much uh, of that chemistry are you really going to see just from that? Yeah, we'll see. I I almost think it's more of a vibes move. Uh, Yes. Obviously Monaghan, Monaghan did prove last year that he still has gas in the tank and he can still produce. Um, So obviously they're not, they're not, it's not solely vibes, but I think, I think just putting Gaudreau in his happy place and, and trying to, to find his way back to even some semblance of what he was in Calgary. uh, Do you think he, they got him because, you know, they, they probably knew Gaudreau uh, was upset at himself, didn't have the best year. You think that's one of the reasons they targeted Monaghan? 100%. Hundred percent. I hundred yeah. percent think so. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, and so speaking of Gaudreau, uh, Johnny Gaudreau, I've got him for twenty four goals, fifty two assists, seventy six points. 
uh he had the lowest shooting percentage and the lowest yeah. ipp of his career last year so that that is just bound to to bounce back yeah. like he he had a he had just a dreadful year last year yeah uh his yeah. his apples and genos adp is 127.7 and in yahoo it's actually 181 now part of that is because um yahoo mock drafts are bangers cats mock drafts um and kadro doesn't have a ton of value uh peripherally in bangers cats leagues yeah um, especially now that he plays on Columbus and, and the power play points aren't necessarily there. Uh, but they could, I, I, I mean, there is a scenario where this power play is, is at least half decent and, yeah. uh, and he, his power play points come up a little bit. So I do think you could get Gaudreau at some nice value. Yeah. I love, season. I love the value there. And again, like, uh, people are forgetting, like this guy was shuffled so constantly. He wasn't given the opportunity to build chemistry. Um, if he sticks with Monaghan and Marchenko, who's a beast, uh, who knows? Sky could be the limit for this guy. At, at such a value of an ADP, I'm definitely going to draft him, even if I'm in a bangers league. For sure. I've got Kirill Marchenko as as the other forward on that top line. He had I, I have him for 27 goals, 24 assists, 51 points, which would all be career highs, but they're not that that crazy. Uh, they're, they're not like... Uh, it's not a crazy projection based on what he's done, uh, in his first couple seasons. Uh, his, his, uh, Apples and Geno's ADP 213. He's not drafted in Yahoo. A lot of these guys are not even being drafted in Yahoo. Uh, um, love and, that. And a lot of I them are, are, a lot of them are probably guys that you're not going to hold on your roster all season. Kirill Marchenko is probably like a high, high caliber streamer. Um, mm -hmm. but with, yep. with potential to be a hold, um, yep. Adam Fantilli is the one guy, though. Uh, I've got him projected for 24 goals, 32 assists, 56 points. Uh, he had a 45-point pace last year, basically playing on the fourth line for a good chunk of it. Uh, and then he got injured. Um, and that's his rookie season. So, I, I, I mean, I, I could see him uh, busting through even more than this 56 points uh, if he has nice deployment for, for the year, if he gets power play time um so fantilli i'm really high on i i think yeah. there's gonna be huge value there not getting drafted in yahoo at this point pretty low on the, on the apples and genos adp as well so uh yeah fantilli's a guy that i'm i'm definitely keeping an eye on in the later rounds of the drafts is that a guy you're targeting i know I, kind of yeah i love party. this guy yeah uh for a rookie his shots per 60 was was pretty solid i think it was like nine shots per 60 or, or something yeah. like that yeah um and you know it he's only going to improve from here again i think it's so valuable for especially rookies to just build chemistry with other players how does johnny goudreau pass me the puck you know how what what's the positioning i can expect from monahan um you know the, he's still a kid he's not i don't even think he's 20 so um hopefully he doesn't end up in dean evison's doghouse and is able to you know stick with his line mates um yeah yeah for sure uh, I'm just going to run through a few of these other names. Like I, I'm not even going to go into the projections, but Ken Johnson, yeah. Igor Chinnikov, Cole Sillinger, Dmitry Voronkov. Those are all guys that are definitely going to be, uh, be streamers this year. Absolutely. Um, I, I, I do think there is some value. Cole Sillinger, uh, gets a ton of hits and blocks and is, a, and was pretty highly touted. They're all really young. Um, yeah. so there is there is an opportunity for for any of them if they get a nice spot in the lineup uh, to potentially pop, um, but I just don't know. I don't know if any of them will get that. I, I it's it's really hard to say. This team is so chock full of young talent. Um, I just don't know who they're going to prioritize. So those are all guys I have relatively conservative projections on, uh, anywhere from forty to fifty points. Uh, but uh, they're, they're right. guys that you should you should keep in mind. But the uh, the last forward I do want to talk about is Boone Jenner. Um, oh, yeah. projected for tw 27 goals, 26 assists, 53 points, 143 hits, 94 blocks. This is a categories monster. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. His Apples and Genos ADP is 215.3, and in Yahoo, it's 165. Um, do you have concerns, Gugs, about him being pushed down the lineup with Sean Monaghan? Oh, absolutely. And his value being curbed here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, if I'm drafting Boone Jenner, I'm not expecting him to get one C deployment, power play one deployment. I could, you know, I, it could definitely happen again. I think Sean Monaghan's going to, you know, Augusta wind is going to break his bones. Who knows what will happen? 
at that point. But what what I love about Boone Jenner is, you know, again, I all my leagues are mostly bangers cats, and this guy just fills the entire right side of of the stat sheet, especially with faceoff wins. Um, 143 hits, 94 blocks from a forward. That is that is beautiful. And when I think of Boone Jenner, I don't really care about point or power play production, but he's still capable of doing that if the team needs it. Um, his Yahoo ADP, you know, you, you really got to uh, see how your team is structured at that point to see if if uh, those peripherals are are worth drafting at that point, because uh, you might you might have some some better value picks there. But this guy is always going to be on my radar. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I, I think so as well. Uh, there, there is definitely some concern now that now that they're the center depth is 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 thicker. But I, I do think he's going to still get opportunities there. Yeah. Um, he's 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 a guy that that coaches love and that they trust and, and that can play up and down the lineup. So I don't think his I don't think it's yeah his ice time may decrease, but I'm not I'm not incredibly concerned. Uh, yeah. And then in terms of defensemen, I I did a few projections, but I think the main one I want to talk about is Zach Wierenski. I've got him projected for 19 goals, 45 assists, 64 points, 252 shots. Um, Oof. That's awesome. He, this so these would be career highs. Um uh, mostly that uh, I mean the that's mostly because he's he's not really had a, a healthy 82 game season. Last season he did play 70 games and had a 66 point pace with the second lowest shooting percentage of his career and yeah. that's with that's with uh Pascal Vincent looming over him. <laughs> So it, it, it's like it, it, this guy. This guy does have the potential to really pop. Yeah, uh, he gets, absolutely. He gets he gets blocks too. Like he he is he is a um, does pretty almost well two blocks per blocks. game last year. That's that's pretty awesome. Coupled in with the shots and the point production, um, I love this guy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like this is a guy that that shoots um, almost as much as any defenseman in the league. Like he yeah. he's right up near the top in terms of shot rates uh, every season. Um, with the with the big guys like Kale McCarr and and Roman Yossi uh, just behind those guys, so uh, yeah, this is a guy that I think if he could have a full eighty two game season and there's any structure at all, like he could really pop. And his yeah. Alvis and Geno's ADP fifty two point six, I think that's pretty reasonable. I actually think I'm probably bringing it up because of the best balls I was picking him in like the fourth round, basically every yeah. time. Uh, but uh, in his Yahoo ADP is 116.3. So that's crazy. That's where you're going to get some crazy value yeah. on Zach. That is, so yeah. um, I'm not, yeah. there, there are few players that I'm higher on than Wierenski, uh in terms of value picks. Uh, yeah, that's so, he yeah. always screams value, and 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 yeah, if if he could just stay healthy, if the coach just doesn't act like a dingus, this guy is going to give huge value. For I I can definitely understand picking him in the fourth round. Um, I, I think it depends on the the caliber of your opponents in in fantasy. Uh, like my yeah. friends are fucking idiots; they're dumbasses, and they're going to forget yeah. about this guy. So I'm gonna I'm gonna wait maybe. You know, I might be a little risky. I might take him in the seventh or the sixth, but I, you know, if you have smart opponents, fourth round, no worries, take him there. Yeah, that's the thing is is uh, when when you start playing in more competitive leagues, yeah. you have to you have to start just taking shots on your guys because because uh, yeah. otherwise someone else is going to. So, uh, Warinsky's a guy I know in the best ball leagues. Uh, that's a situation where you can't wait too long on mm. on, on your boys. So. Um, yeah. Uh, all right, so let's go into our targets. So in terms of punts, I I mean I don't know that there are any punts. Like like all of these guys uh, are either guys that I'm, I'm probably not going to draft, or in the case of like Jenner, uh, Fantilli, Gaudreau, I mean they're guys that are their ADP is so low that like I I just don't yes. think like I, I think they all could get could bring value. So yeah, I yeah. I mean the closest player to a point punt that i have is boone jenner just because he's likely pushed down the depth chart so yeah. maybe he's like a, a, a like a last couple rounds of the draft guy but yeah. even so like i still think he brings enough peripheral value that that uh, uh he i mean that yeah. he's still he's still gonna be a value at that point totally um yeah. and then a sleeper we talked about it but adam fentilli is my sleeper uh yeah, and top 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 three targets no surprise, based on the conversations we've had, Zach Wierenski, Adam Fantilli, Johnny Gaudreau. Is there anyone else uh, other than those three that you would be targeting? 
No, those are, those are the big boys. Again, in uh, do you do categories leagues or are you mainly points? Uh, I do cats leagues as well. Cats yeah, leagues, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I I would add Boone Jenner there, but not not anywhere uh, before maybe the eleventh round. I I'd take him post eleventh round if you have a, a categories league with pims and face off wins. If you don't have face off wins, I, I'd wait even further for him. But yeah. All right, let's move on to the Devils. We are uh, this. This is going to be a, a beefy episode. We may have to split it up, but but that's okay. Oh, I'm, I'm this yeah. is I, this is uh, this is fun. I, I, I yeah, it's a good time. Yeah, uh, it's like Christmas. So New- this is fantasy Christmas right now. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> the New Jersey Devils. Uh, this team was incredibly disappointing last year. Seventh in the Metro after after a huge year the year before. Uh, but they were under the, under the hood. They were pretty decent in terms of offense, seventh in Corsi four percentage, 20th in expected goals, four percentage, according to natural statric, but then 11th in scoring chances, four percentage. That is a little bit confusing to me. Uh, but just the, the expected goals, uh, um, metrics are, are, are a little different on natural statric, uh, than, than some other spots, but it's scoring chances uh it sounded like they were they were actually producing pretty well their 5v5 shooting percentage 30th in the league or sorry save percentage 30th in the league <laughs> 891 they did not have goaltending that was the biggest no. issue uh yeah. they their goalies could not stop a beach ball uh they have yeah. addressed that uh their yeah. shooting percentage uh at 5v5 was 10th in the league at 9.88 uh and then their power play percentage was 13th at 22.4 percent conversion um this is a team that i do expect to bounce back uh key departures kathel kakin and kevin ball alexander holds akira schmid no one really of consequence there no um they're they're key additions these are key uh jacob markstrom that's the biggest one like that's yeah. that's massive. that's huge uh yeah, yeah. I, a guy that can that can make a save uh, so yeah. that that that's uh that's a massive addition paul cotter yeah he's gonna get you some bangs thomas oh, yeah. some depth scoring brett pesci uh that's uh shores up the defense as well uh and then brendan Dillon, uh another yeah. banger he's 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 a he's a a huge bangers catch streamer he's a target of mine a lot uh, oh yeah so i love so brendan nice Dillon. Addition. Yeah. yeah, he's uh he went to high school across the street from me, Surrey boy. So I'm a I'm a draft him for that. Oh, nice! Oh, very <laughs> cool. That's awesome. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's uh I I like him a lot in, in in bangers cats leagues, uh, and he'll shore up the defense as well. So they they've got a nice kind of kind of uh middle middle pair um in Brendan Dillon and Brett Pesci not sure if they will play together but but uh it definitely shores up their defense a little bit so I like the outlook of this team uh I think regardless uh they would be bouncing back uh, even just with the addition of Markstrom uh but yeah Markstrom had 48 starts last year he had a 915 even strength save percentage uh pretty solid year in Calgary when even though the sky was kind of falling there yeah. uh and Jake Allen they also brought in at the trade deadline last year he had 33 starts last year with a 911 even strength save percentage um so still a guy that has juice in the tank I think and honestly like when when people are are have been talking about Jacob Markstrom uh in these previews they're talking about him being like a top uh, uh like a top five goalie in the league this right. year just because he's playing mm-hmm. on the devils and i just don't know that that's the case i just yeah. because jake allen's in the fold um, exactly i yeah. do i i do think they'll probably share the starts a little bit more i do Agreed. think markstrom is the starter like it's not going to be a tandem situation but i do think allen is probably going to play more games than people think um, yeah. So yeah, you agree well, with that, Guggs? I yeah, you know, uh, again, Markstrom was uh, he was a Canuck, and he's a solid goaltender. But you know, you really got to manage his workload. I feel, especially uh, he, I think it was a few knee, a couple of knee injuries he's had in his career. So, and Jake Allen, he's he's a solid goaltender. So you shouldn't be too worried about giving Jake Allen a start here or there. Do you think it's more of a one A for Markstrom and a one B for Allen, or? I still do think he's probably going to be a volume starter just not yeah. as much volume as like a demco or right or, or people like that um like a vasilevsky um yeah just oh yeah because no. they have they have a relatively quality backup so i do totally. think i i think it's probably like a i don't know like a 60 40 or a 60 yeah. 
35 yeah. that type That's of situation fair. um but yeah I, I i don't think that i mean I, obviously i think markstrom is going to be a really solid goaltender but i i i think that he's probably going to be overdrafted this year so it, he's not a guy that i'm going to end up having on my team do you uh, know his adp I, I didn't i didn't check his adp i didn't check his adp i didn't check yeah. goalie adps just because yeah uh, me neither uh, i don't think <laughs> I'm probably pushing them all to the bottom, but uh, same. We, I, yeah, yeah. I, anyways, we'll we'll look, we'll look that up at some point. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Let's go to uh, schedule quirks. So uh, they've got 12 back to backs. They're tied for 16th, uh, and then they have 31 off nights. That's tied for 11th. Uh, they uh, their uh, 20 weeks 22 to 24 playoff schedule. Nine games with five off nights. So not a fantastic playoff schedule. Um, in in those weeks but if your league goes to the bitter end in weeks 23 to 25 they have 11 games and six off nights which is a decent playoff schedule there um middle of the pack but but uh six off nights is is pretty nice um all right let's go to let's go to the power play projection um sheldon keith coming into the fold yeah boy Uh, that's your guy right there my boy yeah i mean yeah i suppose he's my guy like i, I do like <laughs> sheldon keith i like sheldon keith uh i don't know that he really made enough adjustments in the playoffs to uh, uh to have success and yeah. that's i mean that's really the reason that that he got canned uh but i think uh the one thing that you can't expect from Sheldon Keefe is he's going to play his guys and that's what we love in fantasy yeah. hockey. Uh, so I, I expect them to load up a top power play. Uh, and I, I expect that to be Jack Hughes, Nico, he sheared Jesper Bratt, Timo Meyer. I don't really think there's anyone else that could challenge yeah. for a spot at forward on this team. Uh, and then on the back end, the question is, is it Dougie Hamilton? Is it Luke Hughes? I think the answer. I I think it should be Dougie Hamilton. I think he it should be a ton a ton more than Hughes. I I don't yeah. think Hughes. I think Hughes is kind of an overrated player at this point. Obviously, a really yeah. good prospect, but at this point in his career, uh, I, I do think that that there's a lot of uh, a lot of name brand that that's been thrown around yeah, just because totally. he's a Hughes brother. Um, but. That doesn't necessarily mean that Dougie Hamilton is going to be the guy on the top power play. So, uh, yeah. well, I, you know, Dougie's have... Dougie's ADP is, uh, even, even if he doesn't get that top power play, like, uh, I think, uh, what he had, like he played 20 games last year. Uh, he still got like 16 points, five goals, 11 assists, not getting top power play deployment. He's at his ADP. That's not bad. Uh, and then you got yeah. the upside of him actually getting power play one. And then you're just laughing, you know? Yeah, of course. Of course. Uh, yeah, and I I factored I factored uh, a, a power play share into my projections. Um, so uh, I mean we'll we'll talk about that when we get into my projections here. But let's 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 uh, let's talk about the forwards here. Yeah. So we've got to kick it off with Jack Hughes. Oh yeah. Uh, I've got him projected for forty nine goals, fifty eight assists, one hundred and seven points, three hundred and sixty nine <laughs> shots. That is elite, and thirty eight power play points. These would all be career highs for jack hughes very yeah. bullish on this guy i think he's a guy that you could get add value even though his adp in yahoo is 12 and his yeah. apples and genos adp is 11.8 like that's a guy that i think could even outperform that adp uh, yeah. especially in points leagues like obviously the peripheral value isn't necessarily there doesn't really hit or block but he shoots man oh, and yeah. uh he scores goals uh power play points are gonna be there and those are extremely valuable in bangers cats leagues. And I think are oh, yeah. actually undervalued because power play points are really hard to get. Um, yeah, there's, totally. there's very few yeah. players that get elite power play points. So yeah. um, I'm totally yeah. like, you know, in those early rounds, even though I'm like a slut for bangers categories, players, um, like this guy gives you so many power play points. He's an elite point producer, an elite shot producer. I don't give a shit if he has three hits at the end of the year. Cause like, it's so much harder to, I think Nate said it himself. It's so much harder to find an elite point producer on the power play. And, and you can get a, 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 a Jeremy Lauzon and a, a good ass in your double digit rounds later to make up for Jack Hughes, lack of a uh, banger cats. 100%. But in terms of someone that can cover the categories, oh, we've yeah. got Timo Meyer here. 
Uh, I have him for a pretty bullish projection. Uh, 36 goals, 42 assists, 78 points. Those would be career highs. Yeah. Also 291 shots, 140 hits. Uh, right now, his Apples and Geno's ADP is 38.3. Um, I think that's pretty reasonable. Yahoo ADP is 81.5. Now, he did have a down year last year. It seemed like he had an injury, but at the yeah. end of the season, he really started popping when he got yeah. some, some nice deployment. And I could see him getting a lot of ice time just because of the way that Sheldon Keefe deploys his guys. So yeah. Timo Meyer, I think, is a guy that you should be jumping on, especially yeah. if he falls like that. Uh, Definitely. Yeah. How, what's your yeah? That's your feeling on Meyer as well. Yeah. I you know um I think it was two what, what was it uh, his last season or second last season with the Sharks. This guy was pretty much not being drafted. Nobody liked the Sharks. Um, and he had like a career year and um at the the value he went for for he, he was like a first second round player and uh i kind of see that there's a potential for him to to have that similar value to that because like people are sleeping on him he made a lot of people really pissed off i held on to the guy for literally most of the year and unfortunately dropped him in multiple leagues right before he went on that hot streak so yeah. I, you know i i see the potential there he shoots a ton he throws the body a ton he scores you some goals um yeah sheldon keeps i don't think sheldon keeps gonna play games i think he's gonna stay on that uh, power play yeah uh yes for brat uh this is uh, a guy that that nate and blake are huge oh yeah huge they're gonna be hyped on him on. Yeah, I uh, I have a relatively conservative projection, but I do I do see the upside here for Jesper Bratt. Uh, Thirty one goals, fifty assists, eighty one points. Uh, that's what I have him for. They both have him for for more than that. Um, and I I mean I I definitely can hear the argument for that. Apples and Geno's ADP twenty nine point eight. I think that's probably because Nate has been has yeah. been so outspoken about his love for Jesper Bratt. Uh, in Yahoo, it's forty six point five. I do think that there is uh you could probably that could be value uh, at 46.5 yeah. for yes yeah. brat especially sure. if jack hughes stays healthy for the whole season and they play together um yeah i mean the, again sheldon keeps gonna play his boys so yeah um i'm i'm pretty pretty excited for for brat as well nico he uh i've got him for a relatively conservative projection to 28 goals 44 assists 72 points i could see him busting through that uh the reason i've kind of dial it back is just because there's not a ton of offensive depth on this team uh so i don't know what his 5v5 situation is going to be uh whether they split meyer and brad up and put one of them with he and one of them with hughes i mean that that i mean then i i could see his point ceiling kind of increasing um but his he's being faded like crazy yeah uh, and i love and that i think you could get massive value for nico he year his apples and geno's adp is 95.3 and in yahoo it's 113.6 yeah this is a guy that was like drafted in the fifth round last yeah. year um, yeah and he's being pushed way down like uh, if you're fading centers this is a guy that you could grab and be so stoked about oh yeah that's um, exactly what i was thinking fade centers in the early rounds get your elite point producing wingers get yourself a nico he uh in maybe even the double digit rounds if you're lucky yeah 100 percent uh and then i projected andre palat and dawson mercer neither of them i think are going to be super fantasy relevant uh I mean, they, they're definitely streamers. Um, yep. Palat, I think I've seen probably his best days of his career. I think he's on the he's on the back half. I've got him for 44 points. Uh, Dawson Mercer, 21 goals, 26 assists, 46 points. Uh, his Yahoo ADP is 176, which is, uh, I mean, I'm surprised he's being drafted in Yahoo yeah. leagues. Uh, just because there's not a ton of peripheral value there. But, uh, I mean... He's a guy that definitely he does have a bit of upside and and will play minutes, uh, but I'm not expecting him to be to be like a full time roster player no. uh, in fantasy. Um, and then in terms of defensemen, we got Dougie Hamilton, we got Luke Hughes. Uh, I've I've factored in the fact that they're probably going to share power play time, as I mentioned. Uh, but I still have Dougie Hamilton at 17 goals, 49 assists, 66 points, 258 shots. Uh, and his getting drafted at 51 in Apples and Geno's leagues and 65 in Yahoo leagues. 
Um, so there could potentially be some value there for, for Ducky Hamilton, but there oh, yeah. is certainly risk. That's, that's the thing. Yeah. Like if he doesn't, if he, uh, if he plays power play two the entire year, he's probably not hitting those numbers, but mm -hmm. he does bring enough at five V five that he is going to produce, uh, and, and be really solid on your fantasy team. Just might not live yeah. up to those ADPs yeah. if he doesn't yeah. get power play one time. I, I think he pissed off a lot of uh, fantasy owners because they spent such a high draft capital on on him yeah. last year. But but at this at where he's going now, I, I'm willing to take that risk. Yeah, uh, Luke Hughes. I've got him for seven goals, thirty four assists, forty one points. Uh, he's going at one forty seven point seven in Apples and Geno's leagues, one hundred nine point eight in Yahoo leagues. This is a guy you definitely. Uh, I mean, this is my punt. Uh, yeah. I, I'm going to talk about it here. He doesn't do anything peripherally, doesn't generate a ton under the hood. Obviously, there is space for him to uh, take another step. He was a rookie last year. He's super young, um, so I, I, I mean, I'm definitely, I'm definitely open to him taking another step. But there's nothing that I've seen that that makes me incredibly excited about about Luke Hughes as a fantasy asset this year, especially with Dougie Hamilton there competing for power play time. So. Okay. Uh, even with power play time, I don't see his ceiling increasing that much, uh, over yeah. that 41 points. Like I, I do think the 47 points last year was probably, probably around the max that I see him achieving this season. So I see that. Uh, yeah. yeah I don't know. What, what are your thoughts on Luke Hughes? Uh, you know, one, so last year, uh, one of my uh, main competitors in my in my home league, he had Luke Hughes for for longer than he should have, in my opinion. And uh, I was just telling the boys, like, let's really pump Luke Hughes's tires. So we all sent him like trade requests for Luke Hughes, like really bad trade requests. And we we, we just really our, our strategy was to make him hold on to this guy as long as possible in a bangers cats league. Unfortunately, at the end of the year, the dude like kind of went off, so it kind of backfired. But anyways, what I'm trying to say is uh, I, I don't want him. I kind of feel like he's a bit of a trap. Um, and I, I'm more than happy to let my opponents take this guy. Yeah, I 100% agree with that. Totally. Um, all right. Top three targets. Uh, I talked about. Oh, yeah, I didn't mention a sleeper, but this is kind of I mean, these are kind of that's kind of what this section is for. Um, not a, not really a sleeper, but I think Nico Heischer, as we mentioned, could be a major ADP value. And yeah. then, uh, like I said, Jack Hughes, it could be a value even getting him in the first round. Uh, yeah, and then, that's crazy. Uh, Timo Meyer's ADP is way too low in Yahoo right now. So, uh, that's a guy that I think uh, could bring some huge value. And then, yeah, I, like, I, like I mentioned, Nico Heischer. All right. New York Islanders, the most exciting team oh, in fantasy no. hockey. Uh, third in the Metro last year, not really sure how, because as you can see, <laughs> uh, un Yikes. under the hood, not strong. 25th in Corsi yeah. 4 percentage, 24th in expected goals 4 percentage, 25th in scoring chances 4 percentage. Had like a crazy, uh, like a negative goal differential as well. Uh, it was really shocking them and the Capitals. It was like, how do you, how are you even here? It's just the Metro was so bad yeah uh, they didn't I want that they, last power play spot and like they they tried their hardest to to not take that power not, play spot to, yeah. yeah they backed right into into the playoffs it was yeah it was, it was tough uh I, a big reason though was their 5v5 save percentage was fifth in the league at 916 they got outstanding goaltending from their boys and they are back uh, that's something that you have come you can come to expect from the Islanders is really yeah. strong goaltending. It was um, Varlamov, we'll wasn't it? I think Varlamov outperformed Sorokin last year, wasn't he? At at the end of the season, yes. Yeah, for the, yeah. that last stretch. And he did uh, play in the playoffs, which is interesting. That uh, is interesting. Their 5, 5v5 shooting percentage, 24th in the league at 8.98. So there could be a bit of a bit of a positive regression coming there. But, I mean, a lot of their guys are not really high – uh, efficiency converters so yeah. not really sure about that uh their power play percentage was 20.3 so they're actually a decent power play uh 18th in the league and that was relatively sustainable because they they do have some guys that can that can score now um but yeah we'll we'll get into that so their key departures are Kalp, clutterbuck and matt martin now obviously uh these guys aren't huge fantasy 
like like guys that you're holding on your fantasy roster no. uh full time but that does show that there is a shift in culture for this team because Clutterbuck and Martin were kind of like a, a, the OGs the identity of this team yeah like they've been yeah. around forever playing on that fourth line they're uh two the the two highest uh uh they have the two they're one and two in, in all-time hits all time uh, in the, in, oh in nhl history uh i've talked about that before but it's it's uh definitely um the islanders have been known at their home rink to really hammer the hit button <laughs> on the stat sheet so <laughs> whoever's whoever's collecting hits uh it's it's maybe maybe a little bit inflated and that's yeah. very clear uh in the all-time numbers but have these guys uh, found yeah, another it, team are they ufas I believe they're both still UFAs. Yeah, oh, okay. so very oh, interesting. Boy. Clutterbuck is is getting up there. They're both they're yeah. both getting up there in they're age. Both, but, yeah. A lot of miles. Um, yeah, uh, and then in terms of key additions, Anthony Duclair is is a big one. Um, he he will he's projected to slot in uh, pretty high in the lineup. And then Maxim Siplikov, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Uh, they signed him out of Russia. There's not a ton of information that we have about him, but I will talk about him uh, a little bit later. Um, yeah. In terms of goaltending, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we've still got Sorokin and Varla Verlamov. Uh, Sorokin had 55 starts last last year, had a 924 even strength save percentage. Uh, Varlamov had 27 starts with a 927 even strength save percentage. Sorokin, historically has been the volume starter here and he's been one of the first goalies off the board um with with patrick Waugh coming in the fold uh some context here he did have Simeon varlamov in colorado um so there is right. a relationship there right. and it, he showed at the end of the year that he's not afraid to to run with varlamov if sorokin uh has uh, some issues so mm -hmm. you almost wonder if there is going to be a little more of a sharing of starts uh, this season, uh, even though Sorokin has that massive contract, um, yeah, there is definitely some question and definitely a discussion to be had about that. It remains to be seen. It, it's all yeah. speculative, uh, but yeah, the, yeah. There, that context with with that prior relationship and with the fact that Varlamov was the starter in the playoffs, like he was. Yeah, that's uh, that's so. that says a lot right there. You know, I, he, I definitely trust him, and that makes me think Varlamov is a pretty good zero G target if everyone else thinks Sorkin's going to get the volume starts. Yeah, certainly, absolutely. Um, so, in terms of schedule quirks, uh, another twelve back to back team tied for sixteenth in the league. They have twenty four off nights. That's tied for twenty fifth. Um, and then their week's 22 to 24 playoff schedule. They had 10 games, five off nights. Uh, so a decent schedule, actually, uh, in that stretch. And then in weeks 23 to 25, they had 13 games, six off nights. That is the second best schedule out of any team in that stretch. So mm -hmm. they actually are, uh, are a team that you could be targeting at the end of the season, um, some of their guys, uh, for their nice playoff schedule. So uh, definitely something to at least keep in the back of your mind uh, in draft season if you're deciding between an Islander and maybe another guy at certain points in your draft. Uh, maybe maybe go with the Islander just because of the playoff schedule. Um, power play projection. So they actually had uh, a loaded power play one last year. They had Horvat, Matt Barzal, Brock Nelson, Kyle Palmieri, Noah Dobson, I do think that Anthony Duclair is in the conversation to slot yeah, in for sure. as the fourth forward there. But that being said, their power play was decent, and they essentially stuck with these five the entire season. Uh, yeah. There wasn't they didn't really really move off of up off of that unit. So I imagine they probably start with that. But yeah. uh, I do think Duclair has the potential to get some time there. What do you think Absolutely. about Anthony Duclair? I'm excited for him. Like this guy's uh, being faded. You can get him in, as your last pick. Um, hold on to him for a week. See what happens. Or maybe I, I think we'll have a better idea once training camp starts up. So uh, his ADP might shoot up a bit from there. Uh, I definitely want to keep my eye on him. I think uh, for a guy that's pretty much going to be on your wire, there's a lot of value in him. And you know, Palmieri, Palmieri's, you know, he's 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 not bad on the power play at all. But you know, he's 
he's getting a little older and uh maybe he's gonna lose a step or two so yeah i, I like duclair yeah for sure I, I i'm with you there um in terms of forward projections uh bo horvat uh, I've got him for 33 goals, 36 assists, 69 points, which is very nice. nice. Beautiful. Uh, his Apples and Genos ADP is 124.3. Yahoo ADP is 150. This is a guy that you can target if you're fading centers, uh, and he's going to get you some pretty nice production. Uh, a guy that's really good in faceoffs. Uh, obviously, oh, yeah. you know him very well because of his yeah. time in Vancouver. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on Bo Horvat? Is that a guy that you target in the later rounds? I yeah, I always want Bo Harvet uh, Horvat in uh, in the later rounds. He's 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 always good value. And again, I got face off wins in my league. And the sometimes he gets fifteen face off wins a game. But you get the odd twenty face off wins a game, and and that's crushing for your opponent in a cats league. And uh, I think a lot of people forget this guy's a consistent thirty plus goal scorer, which is pretty damn valuable, especially for a center you get that late. And you know he throws the body. He's he can block a, a puck here and there. Uh, I like him. I like him a lot. And he will be playing on by far the best line uh, on this team. Yeah. Uh, Anthony Duclair, we just mentioned him. Excuse me, just one second. Yeah. <laughs> just had a burp. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so Duclair, Duclair has, uh, uh, I have him for 23 goals, 28 assists, 51 points. Um, I, I could see him uh, getting more than that. I, I, I think he's probably got a 60-point ceiling. Uh, yeah. If all things go well, can you see uh, him hitting be... thirty goals at all? Do you think that's in the? Uh, I, I mean, if if uh, if he redlines on certain in certain areas, yeah. I think there is a there is a chance for that. It's I not crazy, really. Yeah. yeah, I don't think that's really his. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me, but I don't think that I I'm not expecting it. That's for sure. There you go. Yeah, um, I agree. Uh, and his uh, Apples and Genos ADP is 240, and he's not being drafted in Yahoo. So that's a guy that is it, it, definitely a guy that you could take a shot on at the end of your draft for sure. Yeah. Um, Matt Barzal, I got to eat a little bit of crow here because I was chirping Blake earlier in the offseason <laughs> for how high he was on Matt Barzal. And then I did my projection, and it actually came out <laughs> like pretty, pretty crazy. So uh he i i have him for 28 goals which would be a career high 61 assists and 89 points which would also yeah. be a career high um i've got his shot rates and his shot totals uh took a huge uh like it they went up significantly last year um and it's something that's that's an area that he was not was that not really um strong with did that happen like as soon as uh, Patrick Waugh got hired? Is that a product of Waugh's coaching system? Do you know? I don't think so. I think it was just it, it was just a change in his game last year. Like, okay, I, it's a it's it was kind of an across the board thing. Um, okay. So I don't know if someone last offseason told him to shoot more. He is yeah. kind of a low percentage shooter. Like he's not very high efficiency. Like I I, I so I I don't think he has a very good shot. Um, that's why I still have him for twenty eight goals, but. Uh, his, uh, uh, the fact that he has increased his shots, um, I do, th I do like his environment with Anthony Duclair. He seemed to find a nice little home on the wing with Bo Horvat and yeah, he's going to play a ton of minutes. So I, I, I like Matt Barzal, uh, in apples and Geno's leagues, uh, he's getting drafted at 77.4 in Yahoo 71.5. I do think yeah. there's, there's maybe a bit of value there. For Matt yeah, totally. um, like he's his his ADPs have increased um, from previous years, but I, yeah. I do think that there's something there for him. Totally, yeah, yeah. I mean, I remember last year I, I was picking him up from the wire in the beginning, but my dumbass didn't hold him because you know I I I thought he was the same old Barry Trotz Matt Barzal who's not going to really do much, and but yeah, he he definitely stepped it up last year, and uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll admit I didn't. I wasn't really paying close enough attention to Matt Brazil. Uh, how, how can I blame you? It's the Islanders. Fuck them. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Brock Nelson, my boy. Uh, this is a guy that is perennially under the radar. Thirty-three yeah. goals, thirty-five assists, assists, sixty-eight points. Um, that's what I have him for. 
Uh, it's, I mean, and that's basically what he's been at for the last three seasons. Yeah. Uh, but yet Consistent. his ADP is still 155.4 in Yahoo Leagues. That's crazy. 155.5 in Apples and Geno. So even then, still pretty low. Uh, but this is a guy that just does his thing every year. Doesn't matter where he plays in the lineup. Yeah. He's, he's, uh, he's getting 35 goals and pushing 70 points every single year and yeah. to get that at 155 is oh my god it's just great. insane value you're 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 gonna like i he's a guy last year that i locked up in almost every single league and that was yeah. huge it was huge yeah so yeah yeah i love i love that guy he's uh he's awesome i i i think it was blake who who mentioned that he never liked him because he you know he looks like a grouchy old dude on his display picture i think there's some merit to that you you look at his display picture on yahoo and you're just like i'm i'm good this guy looks boring but you know he always gives you 30 plus goals uh he gets great deployment and he's constantly of value at drafts i i, I think uh even if you're not fading centers just pick him up see where it goes right yeah yeah 100 percent uh, Kyle Palmieri, uh, got some power play time last year. He popped a little bit. I have him for 26 goals, 29 assists, 55 points. Um, he's not really being drafted in, in Yahoo leagues, uh, and in apples and Geno's he's at two twenty three. There is, there is a little bit of value here. He hits a bit, uh, yep. and, and shoots, shoots a reasonable amount. Um, so I do think Palmieri is a guy that, that is probably a fringe roster player, probably more of like a, a top end streamer in most leagues. Um, and then Anders Lee, Anders Lee is a guy that, uh, I mean, he, he, in previous years, he played on the power play, but he got moved off of, of, uh, moved off of the power play last year, pretty much permanently. Um, yeah. I don't see him getting moved back on there. Uh, I have him for 26 goals, 15 assists, 41 points. Um, and I see him getting moved down the lineup. He did get some opportunity on the top line with Horvat and Barzal last year. I don't, with Duclair in the mix, I just don't see that being much of a thing this year. Yeah. So I think Anders Lee's fantasy value is, is probably at an all time low. Um, Definitely. Is that your feeling as well? Yeah, no, like even in a, in a bangers league, I don't really think he's worth it. He's, he's getting old. He's uh, he's definitely lost a step or two. And I, I don't think the coach is going to prioritize him. I think he's more of a, a locker room guy at this point, to be honest. Yeah, he's the captain. Uh, yeah. So, so I, I hope so. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, in terms of defense, we got Noah Dobson. I have him for ten goals, fifty three assists, sixty three points, one hundred and ten or sorry, one hundred and seventy blocks. I, I thought I'd highlight that as well because those That's are huge. pretty nice block yeah. totals. Um, this is a guy that I think uh, redlined in some areas last year. Um, he had over seventy points. I don't see that happening again. Uh, there were definitely a few red flags. Uh, and then, uh, I mean, the other factor is uh, his ice time at 5v5 went down significantly once Patrick Waugh came in. Right. The he, he kind of distributed it a little bit more amongst yeah. his uh, whole defense core. Like he was playing Pulak and um, why do I always forget? Pelic. Uh, Pelic. Adam Pelic. Yeah. Uh, Pelic and Pulak. Uh, uh, he was playing them a lot more and Dobson. Uh, who was getting crazy 5v5 time before yeah. uh, Wa came in, uh, was playing similar to those other two guys. So, um, yeah, there's that factor as well. Uh, he is going to play on the power play, um, but he did have a dip in shot rates last year too. So I, I'm not mm. sure if that's an outlier. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I just – I am I think – He's a guy that's probably going to go a little bit higher than I want him. Although in Yahoo, yeah. his ADP is 70. So that's actually, I think oh, that's yeah. a relatively, uh, I'm totally okay taking him at that spot. And Apple's totally. Genos is actually considerably higher. It's 42.8. So that's uh, that's kind of surprising to me. But yeah, um, yeah Noah Dobson, uh, just, uh, I mean, obviously my projection is still awesome for him. Yeah, uh, it's awesome. But, but uh, I, 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 I would definitely not expect him to be repeating uh, last season. Uh, that's you, for sure. As like you would, uh, would you take uh, Wierenski before Dobson? I would, uh, yeah. just because of there is goals upside and he shoots a lot more. Yeah. Uh, and then similar block totals. Like I do, I actually do have Wierenski projected for more in almost every category than Noah Dobson. Okay. So. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely would be taking Wierenski first. Yeah. 
Uh, and then Ryan Pulak, I, re- I projected him as well. Uh, he doesn't have a ton of fantasy value anymore, but he does get some peripherals. I have him for six goals, 20 assists, 26 points, 140 hits, 195 blocks. If he stays healthy, he's a guy that you could you could, that could play on the bottom of your roster uh, yeah. in a Bangers Cats League. Uh, that's about it. Or, or like a high-end streamer. Yeah. Um, so my punt, Anders <laughs> Lee, uh, he, I mean, he's not really getting drafted, so I don't, I, but I, it's, 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 yeah, I don't think any of you are probably drafting him. It's not really a hot take. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, my sleeper is Anthony DeClaire. Uh, th- yeah. is there any, anyone else that you see as a sleeper there? There is a conversation for Maxim Siplikov. Like, is that a guy that you're looking at? I'm going to be honest. I have no idea who that is. Uh, I, this totally team okay. is, this team is so, uh, I'm so not into this team and I've tried watching their games. I, I'm just on my phone the entire time. So yeah. Yeah. I do. What's, yeah, I don't know. What, what's your opinion on, do you think he could, you know, crack some decent deployment here? Yeah. So the deployment situation I think could be good for Sipikov just because yeah. uh, there's not a ton of offensive talent on this team. He had 33 goals and 50 points in the KHL last year in 70 some some odd games. He did have a 19.5 shooting percentage. Uh, I, I okay. figured out um, and his previous career high before last year was 10 goals. So yeah. I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not really sure what to expect from this guy and what they expect out of him. But I do think that there is an opportunity for some good deployment. So he's certainly a guy to watch. I, I just don't, I don't know that I expect a ton, a ton out of him to be honest, but there's just really not, not a lot of information. He's 25 years old. So still fairly young. Mm. Um, yeah. But yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's, at, there's at least a little bit of interest there. But in terms of my top three targets, I got Matt Barzal, Brock Nelson, Anthony Declare. Uh, is there anyone else uh, that you are targeting uh, that you know that highlight? that covers it? Anthony Duclair, great value for a guy you're probably getting off the wire. Brock Nelson's always good value, and and yeah, same with uh, Barzell. So yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, I guess you could throw Bo- Bo Horvat in there too, because him and Nelson right, yeah, get very similar production and have similar yeah. ADPs. Yeah, so I, I think Horvat's another guy you could throw in there too. Yeah, um, yeah I, and I, I've said this about the Islanders, like. They're unexciting, but that kind of mm-hmm. makes them a, a team where you can target value. Like unexciting exactly. teams are, are, are teams yeah. that you can target value value. Absolutely. On uh, like because there are these guys are going to to yeah. be strong for your fantasy team. Yeah. Oh, and Varlamov. Um, I'm, I'm definitely gonna use Varlamov oh, as a yeah. zero G target. Interesting. Yeah. 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 For sure. Yeah. It, yeah. It's a, that's a situation to watch. Definitely. Yeah. All right, let's go to the New York Rangers. So they had a monster year last year. First in the Metro, first in the league, in fact. President's Trophy champions. Uh, they 5v5 were not incredibly strong. They were pretty average. Uh, 19th in Corsi 4 percentage, 18th in expected goals 4 percentage, and 16th in scoring chances 4 percentage and even strength. Um, their 5v5 save percentage was 9th with a 9-10. Um, they're shooting percentage was 11th at 9.79 this is this is where their bread and butter is it's their power play yeah uh, it was third in the league 26.4 percent it's been near the top of the league perennially for the last few years um and uh i mean it's they have pretty sustainable efficiency on the power play too they were third in Corsi four percentage uh, or sorry, Corsi 4 per 60, 4th in expected goals 4 per 60, and 6th in scoring chances 4 per 60. So uh, very, they generate a ton, they score a ton. Uh, that's just a really good power play. Like I don't see oh, yeah. that there being a ton of regression there. So yeah. that's, uh, yeah. Very, uh, if There's a lot to be excited about with the New York Rangers power play, that's for sure. Totally. Uh, in, in terms of key departures, uh, Blake Wheeler, Jack Roslevic, Eric Gustafson, Barkley Gaudreau, none of them are really big names. Uh, so not, not really, and certainly not big uh, fantasy names anymore, yeah. at least. Yeah. Uh, and then key additions, Riley Smith. I think he's a guy that's going to get some time uh, on, uh, uh, on the Zibanejad Kreider line. Um, Cause there is a spot that's kind of been uh, uh, like a merry-go-round of people. So I, I think, uh, I, I don't know. What do you think about Riley Smith? Is that, uh, is that a guy that, that you're, that is exciting for you? 
Definitely not exciting, but uh, I could see the upsides uh, regarding him as a streamer. Uh, I I don't I'm not drafting him, uh, but definitely uh, I I could see the the potential uh, sticking with Zabanajad and and Kreider. Uh, I think it's just a matter of you know building chemistry with him because I remember last draft season uh, there was some excitement with him on going to the Penguins and uh, he didn't really do much with it. So. I don't know yeah. I'm just kind of sour on him because like every time I pick this guy up, he he doesn't do anything, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's pretty fair. I, I, yeah, I, I think that there is there is potential for some production there, but it, again, like, uh, he, his his ceiling is probably sixty points, and that's with, uh, like 55, 60 points. Mm-hmm. That's with power play time, right? Like yeah. that's that's what he he was getting power play time in Vegas and getting power play points. He's not going to get that here. Like there's yeah. just no space for him on the power play. So so I I don't think that. But I yeah, like you said, I think he's probably going to be a, a strong streamer just because of totally. the opportunity that he's likely going to get five v five. But yeah, I, I I I'm not I'm not drafting him at all. I don't think. No. Um, goaltending, we've got Igor Shesterkin. Uh, one of the top goalies in the league, 55 starts last year, 918 even strength save percentage. Jonathan Quick, he had 26 starts. He had a bang and start to the season, yeah. uh, but ended up with a 906 even strength <laughs> save percentage. Really, really tanks at the end of the year and, and showed his age a little bit. Uh, yeah. Shesterkin, uh, I mean, this is a guy that you can pretty much bank on getting 55 starts every season. Like, I think. Yeah. This is look at these numbers here on this slide, uh, and that's probably what you can expect out of these guys next year. Yeah. Um, so if you're into drafting goalies early, uh, I don't encourage it. But Justerkin no. is a guy that that is is probably a fairly safe bet there. What do yeah. you think, buddy? Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, there was a stretch there where Shesterkin uh, couldn't really he, – he he had a stretch of uh, some bad performances there. And, um, yeah. you know, that, that just happens. Even with the most elite goalies, that happens. And, and um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm on the zero-G train. I, I respect Shesterkin for what he is. I'm not going to draft him. Uh, did, have you kept up with uh, – another topic uh, – the Jeremy Swayman contract situation at all? Yeah. Uh, yeah that's a weird one hey like uh it it, it's uh it it almost gives a little more context into uh why they brought Eunice Corpusallo back in the in the Linus Allmark trade right yeah it's interesting if if there was if they thought that there was any chance that that uh Swayman could hold out because it sounds like he might yeah well he there's a I read a thing on the Bruins subreddit today where Swayman uh he seems like he's a little pissed about the arbitration thing what makes sense you know that the team's like you suck and you're not worth the money so now he's using his leverage yeah. but he made a, a really interesting comment where it's like I don't want to ruin the goalie market for the goalies who are going to sign the contract after I sign this and you know everyone's talking about Shesterkin so if Shesterkin's probably going to make like $13 million sooner or later, and that's going to really change yeah. the makeup of this team. Ugh. Yeah. yeah. I don't like yeah. that. I don't like that at no. all. No. I don't think the goalie – yeah, they they can't – you can't be paying goalies that much money. It's – it's yeah. Uh, yeah. But anyway, what choice do the Rangers like, have? You can't let them go, right? I know. What do you, what do, you do? What do you do? Uh, in terms of schedule quirks here, uh, 14 back to backs. Uh, so that's tied for fourth in the league. So, um, J- uh, Jonathan Quick will we'll get a, at least a little bit of time there. Uh, 36 off nights. That is third in the league. So, that is a really solid. That's something to definitely consider when you're drafting. Uh, this team, uh, seems to always have uh, quite a few off nights. Um, and they're kind of a, an underrated team in that regard. Um, their playoff schedule, uh, not so strong. They're in weeks 22 to 24. They have eight games with two off nights. That is the second worst playoff schedule in the league over that stretch. Uh, 23 to 25, it's not so dire. 11 games, six off nights. So it's it's kind of middle of the pack, but with with, yeah. with a decent amount of off nights. So, uh, But yeah, definitely something to consider through the season. Uh, that how much weight would you put valuable. into that? How much, how much weight would play- you put into that? Yeah. To playoff schedule, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, like uh, you're playoff. drafting, and you 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 got maybe Zabinajad coming up, and you know that his playoff schedule is not great, and he's a pure center. You know? What yeah, do you think? I'm not. 
I don't think about it too much uh, during the yeah. draft because because I know that that's something that I can address um, later in the season, uh, like around the trade deadline. Like if I need to if I need to kind of try and improve my games played, I can I can make a trade. Uh, mm. But yeah, yeah, during during draft season, the off nights thing that is definitely something I consider. But the playoff schedule, not so much. I, I don't gotcha. know about you. Is that something you you look at, or is that kind of like too much in the weeds? You know, and during draft season, I'm like it doesn't matter because I got to make the playoffs, you know, but mm -hmm. the closer we get to the end of the season, I'm always like, fuck, I should have, I should have put more weight into playoff schedule. Cause I'm trading yeah. for people who have the most optimized playoff schedule. And I even throw a losing trade uh, to my opponents just so I could get someone who has a decent playoff schedule. So yeah. I, I just find it an interesting piece of like fantasy psychology, you know? Yeah, absolutely. It's, yeah, and this is a this is these this team is kind of a key example of how because of the off nights through the year they are super valuable. But then, yeah, if you are thinking about playoff schedule, they're they're not great, especially yeah. uh, over over weeks twenty two to twenty four. So, but uh, yeah, but in that case, that's a situation where I'm like not really worried about it in draft season. Uh, I, I I'll pick Rangers, and then if I need to later in the year, I'll just trade them for for someone with a stronger playoff schedule. Um, so power play projection. This is an easy one. This is one of the easiest ones. It's going to be mm -hmm. Zibanejad, Panarin, Kreider, Trocheck, Fox. Yeah. Uh, yeah, not much changing there. They're they're really strong. We talked about that already. Let's get into our forward projections. Uh, Mika Zibanejad. You mentioned him. I have him uh bouncing back a little bit i know there is some concern he had a decrease in in some of his uh underlying shot and chance rates um it seemed like there was a little bit of a decline but i still have him bouncing back to 35 yeah. goals 52 assists 87 points 33 awesome. power Ooh, play points 33 points That's um, awesome. which is a lot uh yeah. and and uh his uh, Apples and Geno's ADP is 59.6 and Yahoo it's 71.9. Yeah. So that there actually could be some value to be had with I think so. Yeah. Um, yeah. Here. I, I yeah. think he's another case of pissing off uh fantasy managers who took him in like the third round, fourth yeah. round last year. And I'll take him in the fifth or sixth or seventh. The 33 power play uh center. Hell yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Chris Kreider, I've got him for 41 goals, 25 assists, 66 points. Uh, he gets hits. He gets he gets a few shots, too. His Apples and Geno's ADP is 48.4. His Yahoo ADP, 29.8. I'm not really it's, sure uh, why he's being drafted so high, but that does seem wildly high for Chris Kreider. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, I, I feel like my projection is relatively bullish on him, and I still am like, that's that's way out of whack so, yeah uh definitely be wary be wary of that i think i think you could get much more value for for somebody else at that range yeah. um riley smith uh we talked about him already i have him for 19 goals 25 assists 44 points so not i mean not a ton to talk about there he's a no. streamer yeah vinnie trocek friend of the show him vinnie vinnie tro friend of the show 26 goals 54 assists 80 points that's a career high uh, I have him getting almost a point per game and, and 159 hits. Uh, he had a, just a fantastic year last year. Um, and he seems like he's stapled to Artemi Panarin. There's not really yeah. any reason for them to break up this line of Panarin, Trocek, Lafreniere. No. Um, so I, I do see him. I, if he does move off of that line, uh, I don't think he'll reach these numbers. Uh, I don't see why they would. That's silly. Yeah, his his ADP in in uh, Apples and Genos is sixty two. Yahoo, it's fifty eight. Um, so hmm. obviously a, a huge increase. Uh, yeah. From previous years, but I, I still think that that's um, you could get a little bit of value for Trocheck. That it probably is where yeah. he should be drafted. It's fair. It, it, yeah. Yeah, I think it's a fair a fair spot. Uh, and then Artemi Panarin, I've got him for forty three goals, sixty five assists, one hundred and eight points, two hundred and ninety one shots and 38 power play points he had a huge increase in in shot rates like insane increase like it's because he shaved like, his head yeah maybe that's what it is he was lighter on his feet he, there you go. he got rid of got rid of five pounds of of hair <laughs> and felt like he could fire the puck a little bit more but he yeah uh 
I, I dialed back his shots a little bit just because it was such an outlier. Uh, but I mean, yeah. it, it's certainly possible. Like, and his his uh, deployment situation is going to be basically the same. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I, I I mean, there's certainly an argument that he could repeat what he did last year. But I do have him getting dialed back a little bit. His Apples and Genos ADP is 11.9, Yahoo 12.4. So right at the back end of the first round in most leagues. Uh, are you taking Praneerin at that point? Uh, yeah. I So this is uh, – I'm letting my emotions get in the way here. So in one of my points leagues last year, I got him in the third round. And before the draft even started, my brother sent me a trade request for my Panarin uh, for his Tage Thompson, who he took at like eighth oh. overall. And I'm like, oh, man, uh, bro, I'm going to rip you off. I feel bad about this. But I clicked accept. And, uh, yeah, that screwed me. <laughs> but uh, I, I, you know, with I fantasy. I would have done the same thing at that right? point at the start of the year. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> totally but you know with fantasy you, you as hard as it is you can't let your emotions get in the way I, I i totally think that's fair i don't i don't know if he's gonna reach last year's uh potential uh but if you remember the year prior to gerard glance last season he was like a total fucking disappointment i'm i'm pretty sure he's not going to be deployed like that anymore and and it, as he said he's shooting a ton more i think he's really uh gelling with Lavulette system and vinnie tro's uh, doing some good work for him. So uh, with that chemistry, if they stick together, uh, I think that's a fair ADP for sure. Yeah, and then and then the next guy we're going to talk about, Alexi Lafreniere, he's certainly helping as well. Uh, yeah. He's got. I have him for thirty goals, twenty eight assists, fifty eight points next year. Um, this guy is a guy that has been producing at five v five on this line, uh, and uh, could honestly like if he was able to get uh, a a spot on the power play. Uh, this oh, guy yeah. could really pop, um, yeah. but there's just not not the space there right now. His apples yeah. and Geno's ADP 97 in Yahoo 99.6, so very similar. Yeah, um, yeah I, I like Lafreniere, and I think that uh, uh, there. I mean, I don't, I'm not sure that there's huge value. He does have he does hit a little bit. Mm. Um, his shot I, rates and shot and chance rates went up significantly last year. Yeah, um, but. Yeah, I, I think I'm okay with him in that range, but I yeah. I do think that there's a lot of people that are a lot higher on. There's him. so much more he's value. He's going yeah. to pop even further, even though I don't know that the power play opportunity is there. Like, what, that's, what's your feeling on on? No, that? yeah, I I totally agree. It's like he's a great player, and I I can I could agree that that's a fair ADP. Um, the lack of power play is is the, the reason I'm just not taking him on any team. Uh, at, at that ADP, you can get Dylan Larkin, John Tavares, uh, Vince Dunn, John Carlson, uh, Eric Carlson. You know, there's a lot of surprisingly good defensemen in in that spot. That I always, if I could get a one D, uh, especially in the '90s, I'm I'm taking the one D over a guy who's not even going to lick the power play, right? Yeah, fair enough. Uh... Philip Heedle's a guy I did want to mention. He's sl slotted in as their third line center, but I do think there's there's an opportunity for him if Riley Smith doesn't work out on that second line uh, for him to slot in as the as the right wing there. It, they have done that in the past. Last year, obviously, he had just a myriad of injuries, yeah. and concussions and stuff like that. Um, he had uh, I have him for 24 goals, 25 assists, 49 points, but there is uh, I think there is upside for more. Uh, if he does get uh, an opportunity higher in the lineup. So Filipino, a guy definitely to watch uh, and someone that could be a streamer. Uh, he's he's actually my sleeper. Uh, I'll mention that yep. in a bit. But uh, then in terms of defense, Adam Fox, I've got him for 15 goals, 66 assists, 80 points, 131 blocks. Uh, yeah, I mean, he doesn't have a ton of peripheral value, doesn't shoot mm -hmm. a ton. Um, yeah. Blocks are nice. I... I, I I am still excited for for I mean he's still he's still amongst one of the one of the better fantasy defensemen in the league. His uh, yeah. ADP in Apples and Genos is thirty four in Yahoo. It's forty. Um, another guy that I feel like someone is always higher on than I am, so I yeah. never end up getting him in leagues. Exact uh, same but... situation. I I don't think I've had a single year with uh, Adam Fox on my team. He's always been like a, yeah. a going in the third round, uh, especially after his Norris yeah. win. So he's, he's great. I mean, nearly a point per game defenseman on that power play is awesome, but I, I don't think I'll be taking him there. 
Yeah, I, I don't think so either. I think 40 is reasonable uh, where he's going in Yahoo, uh, like fourth fourth round. But there are yeah. definitely guys in that range uh, on as, on defense specifically that that yeah. I'm a little bit higher on that out of box. Hell, your Roman uh, Yossi then, could drop to round there. And I, I think everyone would prefer Roman Yossi. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, okay, Andre Miller. Uh, I've got him for eight goals, 29 assists, 37 points, 139 hits, 120 blocks. Probably not a guy that you're drafting, uh, but a guy that's still young uh, and and could uh, and, and, and produces pretty decently at 5v5. I think he's probably the, I mean, at least one of the top candidates to, to quarterback power play too, although they're not oh, going to yeah. play very much. Yeah. So there is some, some value there. As well. And I think it's a um, contract year for him. So he's got some motivation. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, my punt is Jacob Truba. Uh, Nate talked mm-hmm. about it on a couple of pods, but Truba, uh, his his uh, defensive metrics were horrendous last year. It's been uh, it's been talked about a lot, but it sounds like they were trying to get rid of him, and yeah. he wouldn't waive his no trade. And there's a whole saga with that. So I, I'm pretty out on Jacob Truba. I could see his his role with the team really diminishing um so i mean we'll see i i could be wrong about that i think there is still some peripheral value there obviously because he hits and blocks a ton but uh i think his offensive upside is definitely going to be curbed yeah um and then philip heedle would be my sleeper um as i mentioned before my top three targets are <clears throat> panarin trocek mm-hmm. lafreniere uh that's the it's the best 5v5 line on the team by far yeah. uh and uh i i do think that that uh they're, they're, I, you know what i might swap in zabanajad for lafreniere to be honest just i would i think his, i would his yahoo adp is so low yeah. um that's i, I think and I'm, you you I'm, want that power play on your team that's a that's a yummy power play right 100 percent, 100 percent. all right let's move on to philly the philadelphia flyers uh they were six in the metro last year uh they were in a playoff spot almost the whole season yeah dropped out at the last minute that's heartbreaking Uh, their underlying numbers were pretty awesome actually uh they were ninth in Corsi four percentage 12th in expected goals four percentage and fourth in scoring chances four percentage at even strength uh their 5v5 save percentage was last in the league 32nd at 885 that was a tough situation um just with carter hart uh yeah the team in disgrace yeah. and then uh sam urson getting forced into a starters role uh maybe wasn't really ready for it uh especially not as a volume starter and probably yeah. got overplayed oh, yeah. um but just because they had no other choice um their 5v5 shooting percentage was also 29th in the league at 8.06 uh so yeah i mean this is a team that generates a lot but a lot of a lot of puck chuckers on this team a lot of guys yep. that that are not high efficiency shooters um so definitely something to be wary of and then their power play percentage was last as well at yeah, 12.2 percent so you're just not gonna you're just not gonna succeed when your power play mm-hmm. is converting only at 12 percent. that's that's, that's really um, the one of the big reasons I, i'm pretty much fading a lot of these flyers i i don't know if i'll have many flyers on any of my teams that power play is just brutal yeah so the, i mean you gotta hope that that they're going to turn it around at least a little bit there is enough talent on this team yeah uh, i i still maintain that that they've i mean there's got to be more in the tank than than a last place power play here their key departures cam atkinson ryan johansson who got who got uh, his contract terminated just recently uh and mark stall johansson didn't even play a game for the team so i don't even know if you could count yeah as a, as a departure i uh i i there's a lot of rumors from his time in the predators that he was just a like a fucking goofball and uh then when he went to the avalanche there's some more rumors hearsay you know can't always believe it that mckinnon yeah. didn't what is the fan of his antics and how unserious he was so it kind of, yeah. you know, it tracks. It tracks that he faked an injury so he wouldn't have to play for the Flyers. But again, it's just hearsay, right? It definitely tracks. There is, it does seem like there is an overwhelming amount of people that that are saying that he's kind of just a piece of shit. So, <laughs> I, I PC mean, boy too. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like, 
I mean, you can't believe everything anyone yeah. says, but when it's like when it's when it's almost everybody. Where there is you're, smoke, you're there like, could okay, be some maybe, fire. Maybe there's some smoke yeah. here, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, and then key additions. It's not really an addition because he was a, already a draft pick, but Mafe Mishkov just coming over from the KHL. That is a huge addition yeah. to this team. I'm excited uh, for that. Absolutely. Uh, so in terms of goaltending, I mean you gotta hope it gets better uh but in terms of personnel you've got sam urson who had 49 starts last year and 899 even strength save percentage and then ivan fedotov who came over from russia had only one start just three appearances at the end of the year uh 833 even strength save percentage that's a really small sample size and obviously he was in an unenviable enviable yeah position. Yeah. So uh, you got to hope he's a pretty highly touted goalie. So that's a guy that, that could provide some value. Uh, he's huge. Both of these guys are zero G targets. Definitely. Uh, just because Philly creates like a, a pretty good defensive uh, scenario for goalies. Um, but they got to perform, right? They got to They got to yeah. <laughs> They got to make some stops. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then uh, schedule quirks, th- 13 back to backs. It's tied for 11th. 22 off nights tied for 27 so not a ton of off nights there for philly uh their playoff schedule also not very good uh weeks 22 to 24 they only have nine games and three off nights and then 23 to 25 10 games three off nights that's one of the worst yeah. uh in both of those scenarios that's that's around the worst so i feel so like really, they're always like, bad with playoff they never have a good playoff schedule yeah and they don't play a ton of off nights uh, typically yeah. so not really a team that has like uh where you want to be reaching on players uh just because their their schedule just isn't isn't that great like you yeah. you want sure things on this team uh there are a few um and uh, we'll look at their power play if they load up the power play obviously tortorella uh, i mean i don't love the way that he deploys the power play but i think <laughs> they should really be loading it up and if they do uh it's it's got to be Konechny. Morgan Frost, in my opinion, should be there. Owen Tippett, yeah. Matt Faye Mishkov, and then either Jamie Drysdale or Cam York. That's how I've projected uh, this to go. I think there will be a bit of power play share there just because, I mean, they they, they play both units relatively evenly. But uh, I'll let, they lean a little bit more on, on the top power play. But, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's still not a great outlook. I do think Mishkov probably... Uh, improves that power play even just by himself um yeah. just because he's such a highly touted guy like he's a he's he's one of the uh one of the top prospects in the nhl like yeah uh, honestly yeah, a lot of hype Connor around. bedard and macklin Ze- celebrini like he he may even he may even win the calder this year like there, yeah. there's potential for that i do I think, think it's that a... there's some uh, there's certainly some concern just because of the way tortorella treats young players yeah, that's exactly what i was uh, gonna say yeah uh yeah that his upside is curbed just by time on ice and and yeah. opportunity but uh i do think he's he's a good enough player uh um, absolutely that he'll still he'll still produce a decent amount his um, adp is a steal too for for a prospect yeah. with such uh such a ceiling yeah i 100 percent agree uh so sh- uh, let's go into the forward projection so sean couturier i've got him for 25 goals 22 assists 47 points uh yeah i i think his role is diminishing a little bit with this team obviously there's the out there's the the uh very public um disagreements between him and tortorella with the healthy scratches and uh yeah i mean he just struggled last year he he, he just wasn't wasn't the same player so uh but i still i still see him being one of the top centers on the team i just don't see him getting as much opportunity as he would have in the past like on the like in terms of offensive situations uh tyson forster i've got him for 19 goals 19 assists 38 points uh he's a young guy that uh could have that probably has a little bit more offensive upside than that yeah uh but again um they're probably gonna roll the lines 5v5 and uh unless he gets power play time which he did last year uh there there is certainly potential there um but i i just don't see him having massive uh point totals next year yeah. travis konechny 
Oh, yeah. Let's talk about Travis Konecki for a second. I've got him for 36 goals, 45 assists, 81 points. This guy produces. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, uh, this is a more bullish projection than I think uh, the other guys have uh, for Konechny, but he does seem to produce no matter who he plays with. Yeah. The other factor is Tortorella clearly likes him, uh, mm-hmm. and he plays uh, he plays him a shit ton. He's, yeah. he's one of his boys. So uh, <laughs> his Apples and Geno's ADP is 48. Uh, Yahoo, it's 74. So there's some really nice value there uh, oh, yeah. in Yahoo leagues. Um, for Travis Konechny he's also right wing eligible which is a position of scarcity so that is certainly something to be considered as well so I'm I'm a big Travis Konechny guy what do you what do you think about about Konechny I love the dude uh for the past like two three years uh he's been taken at absolute value uh I see that you're bullish I'm, I'm wondering are you bullish because you expect the the power play to positively regress last place I'm sure you are <laughs> So yeah, I mean, I do have some. Yeah, I I did uh, I did improve the power play in my projections a little bit, yeah. um, partially because of Mishkov. Uh, I think yeah. that is going to make a bit of a difference, and the quality of chances are probably going to to be better. Um, and I mean, but I don't know. It, it's one of those things. It's so volatile, just with the way that the Tortorella deploys things. That uh, right. I mean. He's a wild it's player. probably more bullish than I'm probably more bullish on some of these guys than I should be. <laughs> uh, another guy is Morgan Frost. I have him for 18 goals, 43 assists, 61 points, primarily because he's playing on the power play. Um, yeah. And I do see a scenario where you have a, a young ish line of Morgan Frost, Owen Tippett and Matt Bay Mishkov at five V five. Um, that could be really interesting. Um, so I, I think Morgan Frost, probably reaps the benefits of playing with those two guys um owen tippett uh, i've got him for 31 goals 33 assists 65 points uh his apples and genos adp is 67.6 and yahoo is 72.6 um that's probably right around where you should be taking owen tippett in like bangers cats leagues these he's a low efficiency shooter but shoots a ton uh yeah. and he has he gets some hits too so really nice oh, yeah. peripheral floor for tippett I've noticed that um, Tippett and Konechny are actually going around the same time. Who would you take? Uh, would you take Konechny for Tippett, and vice versa? I'd absolutely take Konechny first. Yeah, I think the I'd points agree. upside is way higher. <clears throat> and I think Tippett, um, yeah, just he's pretty low efficiency. So, uh, I, I, yeah, I, I just think that, yeah, I think the upside for, for Konechny is higher. I, I think um, Tippett fills the categories a little bit more um but but i i prefer connecting for sure yeah uh and then mafe mishkov really hard to project rookies so yeah keep that yeah. in mind like but i have him for 30 goals 30 assists 60 points um yeah. and that that is fairly bullish as well uh uh his adp in apples and genos is 172 and in yahoo it's 164 so like you said that's pretty good value for a guy yeah. um like that that's around the range where you you're gonna start taking shots on, on Take some guys. gambles yeah yeah and i think mishkov yeah. is probably a guy that that is worth uh at, at, at least taking a shot on the, even though the la- uh, no, there, go ahead. there is but uh some risk with uh with yeah. tortorella being the coach yeah but, yeah you, but you, know, you go ahead with uh yeah there there's always risk with torts but at that adp uh, i'm willing to take that and I, I was just gonna say that the last time such a hyped uh rookie uh with his you know first uh season uh coming to him at around there around this like 160 ish adp that was kirill kaprizov and he had a killer rookie season uh, it's not fair to compare uh mitch Kopp to kaprizov maybe not yet but i'm just saying um the ceiling uh might be a little bit similar we don't know the floor though that's the question especially with tortorella we don't know the floor i'm still willing to take that gamble at that adp Yep, that's a that's a great point, man. That's an excellent point. And Kaprizov, love that boy. I love him oh, so yeah. much. He's a uh, good guy. Let's skip. I'm gonna skip over Lawton and Faraby just because they're not incredibly fantasy relevant. We'll talk about the de- defense, which isn't isn't great either. Uh, no. I, I have three guys that could potentially get some offensive opportunity, um, but uh, again, uh, I mean. You just never know with Torts. Uh, Travis Sanheim, I've got him for nine goals, 26 assists, 35 points, 154 blocks as well. Um, 
His Yahoo ADP is 162.4. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't say I'm high on Sanheim, but that's probably around the range of, of what you can expect from him. Yeah, like, I, I'm fair. probably the most... Uh, I I think I'm I'm pretty confident that 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 is around what you could you're gonna get out of him. Whereas with Cam York and Jamie Drysdale, uh, I just don't really know. Uh, York I have him for eight goals, twenty nine assists, thirty seven points, one hundred and fifty six blocks. Um, I see him and Drysdale probably sharing time on the top power play. Uh, and then Drysdale I have at eight goals, thirty two assists, forty points. I have him getting a little bit more time. Uh, no. although there's really no reason for me to expect that. So uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's a tough one to project these, these flyers. Uh, yeah. Um, well, Drysdale, I mean, he, he has, is a, he's, has been a pretty highly touted prospect. Um, yeah. It's just, you know, torts, <laughs> he, he doesn't get a hundred percent of the power play share. They mix and match things. But uh, if anyone, I I'd, I'd want Drysdale out of all these three. And even then he's on a short leash on my team. Yeah. hundred percent. Like you're p- picking all these guys at the end of the draft anyway. Totally. So yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So those are guys, those are guys that I would punt probably like, I'm probably not drafting any of them, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. but uh, in terms of sleepers, I've got Mishkov and Morgan Frost for the reasons that I mentioned prior. And my top three targets are Travis Konechny, Owen Tippett, Matt Faye Mishkov. Uh, are there any other names that you want to throw on there? No, that's, 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 uh, I agree. Uh, bangers cats with face off. Give you, give Scott Lawton a try. He's not going to get you points, but he'll, he'll be like a Boone Jenner junior kind of, you know? Yeah. Like a Boone Jenner light. Yeah. I there you go. That. I feel that yeah. for sure. Um, all right, let's uh, <clears throat> let's go. The Pittsburgh Penguins, another disappointment. But I I do want to dive in because they have there is a lot of interest here. <clears throat> um, they were fifth in the Metro uh, last year, just missed the playoffs. They were tenth in Corsi four percentage five v five, eleventh in expected goals four percentage, and twelfth in uh, scoring chances four percentage. Uh, their 5v5 shooting or save percentage was 13th at 908. So their goaltending wasn't terrible. Uh, their shooting percentage of 5v5, 9.48%, which was 17th in the league. So, I mean, it's not as if they were like incredibly unlucky at 5v5. Uh, their power play percentage was horrendous. Uh, 31st <laughs> in the league, 15.3%. Shocking. Uh, yeah. but like, let's look at the underlying numbers here. So their Corsi four per 60 was sixth. Their expected goals four per 60 was seventh and their scoring chances four per 60 was also seventh, but they had a 31st ranked shooting percentage in on the power play. Uh, so, so that to me, it, it, it looks as if there's going to be some major positive. Yeah. That screams some value. Yeah. Absolutely. I think there's going to be a ton of value to be had with the Penguins. Uh, their key departures, Jeff Carter, Pierre Olivier Joseph. You can argue whether or not those are key. Uh, their key additions. Uh, Rucker McGrory, uh is going to probably play in the lineup, which is interesting. Um, a, a rookie that's fairly highly touted uh, that wanted out of Winnipeg just because the opportunity wasn't there. And Pittsburgh, uh, I mean, they need some youth. <laughs> so yeah. that's uh yeah. that's an interesting uh and then Cody Glass as well. That's another situation. Oh yeah, I forgot he was on the Penguins. He was getting moved down the depth chart in Nashville and and Pittsburgh was like, "Actually, we'll take him off your hands if you'd like." <laughs> Kevin Hayes uh was acquired in the offseason, Anthony Beauvillier as well, another guy that I mean could get an opportunity uh higher in the lineup. Uh we'll see. I think there's an open spot on Crosby's left side. Um, that could go to one of three guys that we'll get into. Um, so uh, goaltenders, uh, Tristan Jari last year at 48 starts um, with a 912 even strength save percentage and Alex Delkovic 33 starts with a 905 even strength save percentage. That was a surprising number to me because he played very strong at the end of the year yeah. Delkovic and actually took yeah. over the starting spot yeah for that last that last playoff push i called that on um, tiktok i called that you go on christmas yeah, just, uh yeah <laughs> that's that yeah that's i mean uh that's a good take i i mean i i i would not have expected that uh i was surprised that they signed Adelkovich uh last yeah. year but you know uh kyle dubas is uh 
uh, he's high on on buying low on people. So that's oh, yeah. he, he was certainly a buy low candidate. That's for sure. He's one of us. But, Kyle uh, Dubas is one of us. Yes, absolutely. Zero G, <laughs> zero G for life. Uh, so uh, Tristan Jari, uh, I do still think is the starter here. Um, yep. He's got the contract. Uh, if they really wanted to deal him, they would have done it this off season. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I do think that they're that he's probably it, it's probably going to be like a sixty forty. Uh, yeah, that sounds right. Situation. Um, yeah. So Nedeljkovic probably will get a little bit more time, but uh, but Jari, I still think is is the starter. Um, schedule quirks for the Penguins: uh, they've got fourteen back to backs uh, as tied for fourth, so that actually gives, is makes Nedeljkovic a little bit more interesting. Uh, they have thirty one off nights; that's tied for eleventh. Uh, and their playoff schedule in weeks twenty two to twenty four, they have nine games, four off nights. Not a great schedule. Uh, and in weeks 23 to 25, uh, they have 10 games with four off nights, also not a good schedule. So, uh, yeah, the playoff schedule for the Penguins, not great. Um, yeah. but the, uh, in terms of off nights and back to backs, uh, they're actually not in the, in the worst situation. So, uh, definitely still some value to be had here for Penguins power play projection. Uh, I've got Crosby, Malkin, Brian Rust, Michael Bunting, Eric Carlson playing on that top unit. Do you have any objections? No, I love it. And I see a lot of value on this power play. Value all over the board on this power play. It's, I like it. 100%. I think, so Michael Bunting's an interesting one because yeah. I do think that um, he's had limited power play time in his career so far, but the time that he has played on the power play, he's actually been pretty productive. Yeah, he's, had he's really good. He's had nice underlying numbers. So, uh, yeah, I, 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 I like him. And he actually had a bit of a success at the end of the year too, yeah. uh, playing playing on that power play. Um so let's look at forward projections here. So I have a pretty bullish projection on Sid the Kid. Uh, oh, yeah. He's got, I, I have him for 37 goals, 59 assists, 96 points. Uh, his Apples and Genos ADP is 29, and his Yahoo ADP is 26. Um, so we're right in like the middle, uh, the beginning to the middle of the third round. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's where I've seen him go in most of the drafts I've been in. Uh, I like that spot for Sidney Crosby. What do you think about Crosby here? I love him. Yeah. <clears throat> Again, uh, he does everything. Power play points, uh, hits. He gets you a ton of face-offs, good amount of shots. He can block. He, he, he's a, he's a phenom. And, uh, you know, I do like, I don't like, uh, getting centers early unless it's like the big top five centers, but, uh, Crosby, I make an exception for if Crosby falls to me in the mid second round. Yeah. I'm taking him, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, Anthony Bavillier, um, that's a guy that. So, I projected him to play on the top line. A lot of people are not projecting him to play there. I think that there is a chance that he he gets that spot. Uh, Drew O'Connor, I think Nate projected him to be on the top line uh, because uh, I mean, and it, it's for good reason. He did play a good amount of minutes with Crosby last year, so they've shown a propensity to to move him up the lineup. Uh, but I do think Pavillier is is another guy that that could get a shot there. I you wouldn't draft him, him though, or no, absolutely. Yeah, not. I still only yeah. have him for forty two points here. So. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, I mean, certainly a guy if he is playing on the wing that I might stream in if Pittsburgh has a good schedule. But but uh, yeah, no, I'm not I'm not super stoked about about Beauvillier. Uh Brian Rust, uh, I am oh. very high on Brian yes. Rust. I have him for. 32 goals, 37 assists, 69 points, which is very nice. Nice. Um, yeah, I I love Brian Rust. And he's a guy that's going to bring you huge value. His Apples and Genos ADP is 75, but his Yahoo ADP is 145.6. So, yeah, that's I mean, beautiful. I, I, I really like Rust. I know Nate's really high on him as well. He had him for a yeah. similar projection. Uh, what do you think about Brian Rust here? Yeah, I love it. I I, I had Brian Rust uh, multiple years, multiple years. Uh, there was like one year, I think it was either last year or the year before, where he was like going in the sixth, seventh round. That was the only time I kind of backed off. But this this guy is almost always a, a value pick, uh, and especially with Gensel uh, leaving town, I, I don't see why why you wouldn't want to reach for Rust. That ADP is an absolute steal. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Evgeny Malkin, uh, I've got him for a pretty high projection. I, I, I don't, uh, I'm not confident in this one. I, I think he's probably, 
we've seen the best of Malkin for sure yep. in his career. He's definitely on the tail end. Uh, I have him for 29 goals, 47 assists, 76 points. I think that's pretty high. Like, I, I, he's probably going to be be a little lower than that. Yeah. Uh, his Apples and Geno's ADP is 151. His Yahoo ADP, 186. Mm-hmm. This is a guy that will bring you value uh, yeah. at that level. Like, that's basically it. the end of your draft. Uh, you yeah. can't get any Malkin. So that's, yeah. that's uh, uh, I think that's exceptional value. For, Great for him, value. Even, even if he he brings you the same production he did last year, which was like 61 yeah. points. Um, yeah, it's really that's, fun. that's still pretty solid. So yeah. He gets good minutes. Um he he can he can get you some pims here and there. He's a bit of a pest. And you know, they, these guys have missed uh two playoffs in a row. So I'm hoping he's pissed off and and motivated. hundred yeah. percent Uh Michael Bunting, I have him for a big year uh of, of career highs, 25 goals, 36 assists, 61 points. Uh, he's not getting drafted in Yahoo leagues. In Apples and Genos leagues, he's at one seventy one point seven. Uh, Michael Bunting's a sleeper for me. Like uh, oh, yeah. this guy is going to get really good opportunity. I think he's going to probably play with Malkin. If it doesn't yeah. work out with Malkin, he's going to play with Crosby. He's going to play in the top six somewhere. Uh, yeah. I think he's probably the best left winger on this team right now. Uh, so uh, just tons of opportunity here on the power play and at five v five for Michael Bunting. So I I, I see him uh potentially popping uh which is uh very exciting um yeah. are, what are your thoughts on him yeah again pure value uh 60 point player for free uh nearly 30 goals I, I i like him i like bunting he's always been good ever since uh even on the coyotes i remember liking him on the coyotes and he went to the leafs and really popped off and i think people have forgotten that he exists i'm sure a lot of people don't even remember that he's a penguin which is it's good. That's why he's not being drafted. So yeah, I like him. I'm taking yeah. him. Yeah. Uh, and then I've got Ricard Raquel for 20 goals, 26 assists, 46 points, 129 hits, a uh, bit of peripheral upside there, but this is a yeah. really low efficiency shooter. That's probably not incredibly fantasy relevant uh, other than as a streamer. Yeah. Um, and then uh, on defense, we've got Chris Letang. Uh, I have him for nine goals, 42 assists, 51 points, 148 hits, 134 blocks. I love that. Uh, in Apples and Geno's leagues, uh, we've got him at 103. In Yahoo, 143 ADP. Uh, Chris Letang, um, not going to get a lot of power play time. Uh, it's unfortunate, but he still produces pretty well at 5v5. Um, and yeah, it, get, it gets you tons of peripherals. So uh, yeah. although... He did see a bit of a dip last year, which is oh for sure, and which makes sense so. with Carlson coming in and less ice time and yeah, a little less ice time, yeah. But so, uh, they prioritized him a little more uh, than I would have I would have expected. So uh, I mean that's that's certainly good uh, yeah. for for uh, for people that roster him on on their teams. But mm-hmm. uh, and then we've got Eric Carlson. So I've got him for 15 goals, 60 assists, 75 points. So a bounce yeah. back year for Carlson. I'm, I'm really uh, excited for him. Yeah, doesn't have a ton of peripheral upside, but I I do see him. I mean, it, he'll be a huge part of that power play, and hopefully yeah. it bounces back. Yeah. Uh, his Apple's and Geno's ADP is seventy three point two, but in Yahoo it's one hundred one point eight. So that's actually that's massive, yeah. massive value for Eric Carlson. Yeah. Um, I don't know that I have a punt. I had Letang on here. I don't think he's a punt. No. Uh, my my sleeper though is is Michael Bunting. I I do think there's a ton of value to be had on this team just because of how poor they were last year and because they're yeah. old. Uh, and so yeah. people are just kind of writing them off because they're old. Um. Yeah. So uh, I yeah I think there's a ton of value to be had here. Um. Rucker McGrody is a guy that we should talk about. Uh. He had 16 goals, 36 assists in uh Michigan last year. Um, and that was only in 36 games. Uh, and he's a guy that brings some grit. He's a guy that I think if they're struggling to find someone to play on the top line with Crosby that could get an opportunity there, uh, that is the absolute best uh, situation for him. Uh, but uh, yeah, he's a guy that's gonna that's going to play. Like he's gonna have a spot in the lineup, I yeah. think. So. That's why they brought him in. You know, they're not gonna send him down. He's he's gonna play. He's gonna he's gonna at least have a chance. Yeah, he's a he's a guy to keep an eye on and a guy that could potentially get some nice five v five deployments. So so look out for him. I wouldn't draft yep. him, but I w- I would yep. definitely be watching him close. Um, and then my top three targets. Oh yeah, I have Sidney Crosby on the slide, but I actually changed it to Eric Carlson just because 
Carlson, yeah. like that ADP is is crazy low. Like it, it, that's it, value. It decreased significantly when I checked it again last night. So yeah, uh, Eric Carlson is is my top guy. Brian Rust uh, and then Michael Bunting, uh, and then actually yeah. you could throw Malkin on there too. Um, yeah, being so much value, so much value. Back. This might be it's the the sleeper team. team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 100, 100%. on on Carlson, um, I love players that piss off managers the year before people you know he came off a norris winning season last draft people were getting him as their first defenseman at the in the third round and the guy just didn't perform so everyone is scared off of this guy and that means you're getting insane value with his adp so i just love these types of players and i don't think you can lose at that draft capital absolutely absolutely all right let's finish this off with the washington capitals uh, they were fourth in the Metro last year. Again, similar to the Islanders. We don't really know why. We don't know why that happened. Uh, they mm -hmm. were 27th in Corsi 4 percentage, 25th in expected goals 4 percentage, and 24th in scoring chances 4 percentage. Their 5v5 shooting percentage was pretty average. Or, sorry, save percentage was pretty average. Uh, 19th. Uh, they had a 904. Uh, their shooting percentage of 5v5, also 19th uh, at 9.37%. Uh, they were the 17th ranked power play in the league uh, at 20.6%. Um, that's uh, and actually their underlying numbers made it seem like they were that's pretty sustainable. Like they could be a pretty pretty middle of the pack power play, um, but their units are going to look very different because there was a lot of turnover on this team. Yeah, uh, and probably in a for the best. Like I I do think that this team might be improved. I don't know. I'll, I'll like what's your opinion on that? Like actually, I, let's get into let's get into yeah. the changes. So Darcy yeah. Kemper gone, Max Pacioretty gone, Nick Jensen gone. Uh, yeah. They brought in Jacob Chikrin, Matt Roy, Andrew Mangiapane, Pierre Luc Dubois, Logan Thompson. Like that seems like a net positive, does it not? Yeah, I I think this team is much better than last year, and they still made the playoffs with their the team last year, and so I I, yeah. I think I'm pretty excited for this guys yeah i mean they're definitely interesting like yeah. i don't know how everyone's gonna mesh it does seem like kind of the band of misfit toys a little bit uh, yeah totally sometimes that works out like like yeah. vegas uh famously uh had the misfits line and uh, there's a lot of teams that end up having going on a nice little run uh but i don't know it, it could still be just the let's get ovechkin to 900 goal show yeah uh which doesn't really bode well for for uh, uh, much success for the team necessarily. Mm -hmm. uh, Charlie Lindgren had 48 starts last year. He had a real breakout season, 915 even mm -hmm. strength save percentage. Logan Thompson, an identical even strength save percentage, 915. He started 42 games for Vegas last year. Um, I see this being a tandem uh, yeah. with Lindgren probably as the one A just because of the trust there. Um, but yeah, I think these are tandem guys. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, but Lindgren's the, the one a, but I could see Logan stealing uh, Logan Thompson's a good goalie. So I'm actually surprised he got it traded. I, I actually really like Logan Thompson. I think, yeah, I think Thompson's a pretty good zero G candidate just because of the yeah. opportunity to potentially steal a starting spot. Uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, again, like, uh, neither of them probably going to get volume out of the gate. Yeah. Uh, schedule quirks, 13 back-to-backs. They are tied for 11th in the league. Uh, they have 29 off nights. That's tied for 17th, so right in the middle of the pack. Um, their playoff schedule, weeks 22 to 24, 10 games, 4 off nights. Uh, and then twenty-three to weeks 23 to 25, 12 games, 5 off nights. That's pretty decent. It's, de it's a, They have a decent playoff schedule. Yeah. It's not not really great. It's not It's not bad um it's it's okay so so these are guys they're kind of middle of the pack in everything uh in terms yeah. of their scheduling so um there's no real deterrence uh in that in in that department um my power play projection i mean this is a little controversial like there are a lot of ways that this power play setup could go this is how i have it i have it as uh ovechkin strom those are locks for me and john carlson those are locks on power yep. play one uh, where it gets interesting is I feel like Jacob Chikrin, uh, they could go with a two defenseman power play. And I do have it projected like that with Jacob Chikrin uh, playing the left flank opposite to Alex Ovechkin. He's got a booming shot yeah, uh, and it, it would kind of potentially open up some space for Ovechkin on the power play. 
And then I have Tom Wilson as a net front guy, uh, which, uh, I mean, I, I don't think everyone is in agreement with that. Uh, that's kind of how I see it. I don't see Pierre-Luc Dubois as a lock on this power play, but I do see him getting some time at some point. Yeah. Uh, so, but I have Wilson playing net front, so my projection for him is a little bit higher than some others. Um, what do you think, man? Like, there's a lot of there's a lot of options here. Mangiapane is another guy that could get some power play time. You got Connor McMichael in the fold. Yeah. Uh, how do you see this kind of unfolding here? I, I, you know, I didn't even think about a, a double defenseman power play, but that makes a lot of sense, especially with the ceiling Chichern has with his shot. He's, yeah, he's he he's got a booming shot, and you know, I think everyone knows, or at least is a bit better at defending Ovechkin with with father time coming for him. So that's just another threat to take some attention away from Ovechkin. So I, I like that. And regarding Dubai. I don't I don't know why I'm excited for him, but I I, I just have the vibe that he's gonna come for that one C sooner or later because uh you know on the Kings it just wasn't a match. They're a that are trap heavy team. Uh his his name value is lower than it's ever been. Everyone thinks he sucks. I maybe I'm just coping because I've always liked the guy, but I, I feel like they're there's a chance for him to really surprise some people. I'd, I'd love to see him uh, on that power play over Wilson, but who knows? Uh, there's a lot of stories about him being a piece of shit, right? Like that infamous uh, Columbus shift where he just gives up, right? Coaches don't like yeah. that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, all right, let's go into forward projections. Dylan Strom has been really strong the last couple of years. He's kind of yeah. stapled himself to Alex Ovechkin, both on the power play and 5v5. I have him for 23 goals, 39 assists, 62 points. Doesn't have a ton of peripheral value, but he is going to get some points. Uh, so there is some value there for, for Strom. His Yahoo ADP is 182. Uh, Apples and Geno's ADP, 201.8. I do think there's some value here for Dylan Strom. Um, yeah. yeah. Wait, I don't know. What do you think about him? I like him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... I liked him uh, as a streamer last year. He was like the top, topest level of streamer you could have. And yeah. eventually, later on in the end of the year, when they were fighting for a power play spot, he wasn't getting dropped. People were, were sticking with him. Um, yeah. I kind of, if he sticks on that power play, I don't think I would drop him either because I do think the whole team is going to improve. Uh, in, in a lot of regards. So if I can draft him super late, I'm going to hold on to him for a bit. All right, Alex Ovechkin. I've got him for 41 goals, 30 assists, 71 points, 307 shots, 167 hits. This guy's going to be shooting the lights out, trying yeah. to get to that goal record. Uh, his Apples Genos ADP, 43.5. Yahoo ADP, 44.3. What's your feeling here, man? Like, So that's the back, back end of the fourth round for Alex yeah. Ovechkin. Yeah. Are you taking him there or are you fading Ovechkin this year? Because I'm actually not really sure how I feel. So, again, I'm bangers categories all the way. I'm happy to take him in the fourth round. I, I still yeah. uh, have a lot of, of faith in him. In a points league, yeah, I don't I don't know about that. Maybe In a points league, I'd probably take him in a late fifth at earliest uh, or early sixth. But bangers categories, this guy is so valuable. Even even if he doesn't have the the point producing potential he used to have, he he's still a, a legitimate goal scoring threat. Um, and I think the team as a whole is going to positively regress, which will will help his case. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, uh, yeah, I. I, I I feel I feel like he would need to fall uh, a little bit in order for me to 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 really yeah. be interested. But uh, I do think that yeah, there's potential uh, strong value just because they are going to play him a ton still. Totally. Um, Tom Wilson. Uh, so my projection here is 28 goals, 25 assists, 53 points, 243 hits. I did want to want to uh, mention that because that is obviously where you find some upside with Tom Wilson is the peripheral yeah. categories. Um, his apples and Geno's ADP is 181.1 and in Yahoo it's 181.5. So almost, almost identical. Yeah. Um, I do think there's some value here. If he gets opportunity, I could see him playing top line. I could see him playing top power play. Yeah. That doesn't necessarily mean he's going to get that. And his offensive upside uh, is definitely, 
dependent on where he plays in the lineup. So exactly. uh, yeah. definitely a guy that has value in bangers cats. Uh, in oh, points yeah. leagues, I'd probably mm. wait to to determine where he's playing in the lineup to start off the year before I draft him. Um, but again, he's probably going to be a guy that you're getting at the end of the draft anyway. So yeah, uh, yeah. a guy that could pot- potentially bring you some nice value. Totally. And he, you know, he's a, he's a pest. He's always going to get you some penalty minutes. Uh, good. Obviously the good amount of hits and a lot of bangers don't have that point potential that he has. So he really yeah. is valuable in a bangers league. For sure. Uh, Pierre Le Dubois, I have him for 20 goals, 29 assists, 49 points. I'm really low on this guy. I, I, just, yeah. <laughs> I, I just don't I don't have a lot of faith in him. Yeah. Uh I his Yahoo ADP is 175. Uh Apples and Geno's ADP is 243. Maybe you want to take a shot on him at the end of the draft. I'm yeah. probably taking a shot on someone with higher upside. Um yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about him, honestly. Yeah. Like I'm just just not a big fan. Uh Connor McMichael and Andrew Mangiapani. Uh these are both guys that are I have pushing for 50 points. Uh, but guys that probably aren't going to get a ton of power play time. But yeah, I, again, a couple of nice streamers. Uh, let's go to defense. Jacob Chikrin. Uh, with him playing on power play one, I've got him with 14 goals, 33 assists, 47 points. Uh, so pretty bullish projection for me on Jacob Chikrin. His Apples and Genos ADP is 114.8. Uh, his Yahoo ADP, 148.8. So I do think even even if he doesn't get that time, on power play one uh i do think he produces enough even strength uh to justify taking him earlier than 148 so yeah. uh, i think that there's some value to be had with jacob chikrin regardless yeah. of where he plays uh yeah. what are your thoughts there it kind of reminds me of uh, a dougie hamilton light there you know he maybe he won't get power play yep. one but he's still going to give you a ton of value good amount of shots he's He's a good ass hockey player. He really is. Um, but yeah, I, again, I didn't even think about a double power play one. I hope that happens. I'd love to see that. Yeah, I really hope it does too. Like that yeah. actually gets me gets me jonesed up to watch the Capitals, yeah. which is hard to do. Uh, and then, <laughs> <laughs> John Carlson uh, to to finish things off. I have him for fourteen goals, forty three assists, fifty seven points, and one hundred and eighty eight blocks. Uh, he's still got gas in the tank. I don't. He's not going to reach like the 70 points that he used to he used to get to um but uh i mean he's really being faded like in apples and genos leagues 72.2 in yahoo 118.6 so you could have massive 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 value value. from john carlson picking him picking him around pick 100 like that's that's crazy value for him i love that yeah Uh, hopefully he doesn't like lose half his face yeah, I mean, ideally, yeah. Ideally, he doesn't burst an artery in his head again. That would be nice. Yeah. Uh, be so a- Alex Ovechkin uh, is my punt. Uh, but really just, like, punt to the next round. Like, I I, yeah. I, I, I don't know. Like, I'm still willing to, to take Ovi, but I'm definitely yeah. a little bit more wary than I was uh, last year. I think a lot um, of people will. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And and my sleeper is Connor McMichael. I do think that there's something there uh, for McMichael. I don't think that he's going to get any power play time. Um, But I I do think that he has, uh, I mean, he has the best chance of of taking a step here um, on this team. Uh, and he's the highest that I am on any of the young guys that are that are playing regularly in the in the lineup. I'm I'm highest on him than I'm higher than 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 like Lapierre or Marushnichenko and and guys like yeah. that. So, um, and then my top three targets: uh, John Carlson, Jacob Chikrin, Dylan Strom. I think those guys will probably bring you the most value based on their ADP yeah. so far. Uh, Gugsy, before we finish things off, is there anything you want to add? Uh, any other targets you want to add from Washington here? No, that pretty much uh, covers it. Uh, th- those are the big dogs, you know. Uh, M- Michael does intrigue me more as a, a streamer, and especially if you know there's an injury. But no, I think we've uh, you've covered uh, everything I wanted to say there. Awesome, man! Uh, this was a beefer. This is that was one a of the Longest episodes we've ever done. Uh, but I do think it's important to cover as much as we can with these previews. So I'm totally happy with what we've spit out here. Um, 
please uh so yeah that's all we have for today please leave us a review on spotify or apple Podcasts. thank you to those who already have it's helped us it's helped us a lot with our audience growth and you know what we welcome more i did read another uh there was there was another review on apple Podcasts i read the other day uh it had a username that i cannot repeat uh, <laughs> there are very, very few things that I won't say on the podcast, but uh, I, I, <laughs> I now I'm think, curious. Yeah, it's not something that. Yeah, it, 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 go ahead and take a look if you want. It's public, <laughs> yeah. so. Um, it, it, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I we welcome uh, we welcome those reviews, uh, and uh, honestly, they help us a ton. Uh, yeah. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are, I believe, the last time I checked, we were ten away from a thousand uh, on on uh, YouTube subscriptions, uh, awesome. which is a huge milestone for us. We're trying to build that YouTube. Um, so uh, yeah, just hop over there. Even if you listen just to the audio, hop over there, subscribe on your YouTube account. That would be massive for us. Uh, and also like like the videos uh, that that yeah. helps with with the algorithms as well. Um, if you like our content, check out the Patreon uh, to support us on a monthly basis. There are new tiers that Naze has this year with new perks. Um, and uh, yeah, really exciting there. We also have an Apples and Genos fantasy hockey guide that will be released on September 1st. We've been working really hard on that. It's almost finished. Keep an eye on that. That's going to come out, I believe, on the Patreon as well as a separate thing. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely keep an eye on, on, uh, on our Twitters. Um, and shout outs to the band there, there for providing our music. There's Spotify links in the episode description. Also hop into the apples and Genos discord server. Tons of people in there talking oh, yeah. fantasy hockey. Great resources. Lots of fun. There. Gugs is in there. Blake's Hell in yeah. there. Nate's in there. Mark Barber's in there. Uh, fantasy hockey professors in there. Uh, 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 lots You're in there. Uh, I'm in there. Yes, there I'm go. also in there. I uh, can't forget myself. Uh, follow <laughs> us on X. Nate is at Apples Genos. Blake is at Blake Creamer AG. Uh, Guggen, are you on Twitter? I should make a Twitter. I don't like that place. It's bad, but I, 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 I I'll make have, a Twitter. You don't have to have it. You, you no, don't no. Have to have a Twitter. You it's know, okay. if someone wants to ask me a question, uh, talk about the Canucks or whatever, I'll make I'll make a Twitter for you for for you guys, and I'll get back to you, and I'll yeah, I'll put it up here. I would never want to pressure anyone to make a Twitter account. I won't pay for the blue check mark, but it's all good. <laughs> yeah, definitely don't do that. Uh, I am at just Josh and four one on X in case you, in case you're interested, please practice safe stats and happy drafting. Cause it's draft season. Oh yeah. Happy drafting motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Right, it's been fun. One, folks. Have a good one, everyone. <laughs>